Hi, Gail. Hi. I'm, I'm gonna. gonna <laughs> you made it. Great job. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mute you and stop your video until we get to the pickleball item. Perfect. Do you know how to unmute yourself and start your video? No. Okay. Um, when you're in Zoom, you can see at the bottom of the screen a whole bunch of options. Um, okay, I see. Mute and stop video should be all the way to your left when you're looking. I see it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and mute it and stop it. And when it's that item, we'll go ahead and uh, you can start it again. Okay. Okay. So how long do you think that'll be? Uh, the first two items should be pretty quick. That are before the picture. So I just watch that corner and when it goes, when the meeting starts, I'm all right. Yeah, so when we get to the pickleball item and if we, when we call, if you want to speak for public comment, you'll unmute yourself. Right, so, so Gail, when it gets to that part, basically you're going to hear everything. So you'll yeah. know when you get there. Oh, okay. The, the, the muting is just for you, so you can make all sorts of crazy noises now and no one will hear you. But it's, it's when you unmute is when it will hear you. So you'll okay. hear the meeting go on when it gets to... But uh, 12C, 12C is when you'll want to unmute yourself and bring your video up. Okay. Thanks, John. He said it better than I was saying it. <laughs> yeah, um, we don't want to have any of those swear words you heard earlier. Well, you know, Gail, you, you, my ears are sensitive. So. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, like John said, you'll still see everything and you'll see the meeting. So you'll know when it's All time. right. Perfect. All right. Thank All you. right. See you soon. Bye. Hello, Commissioner. How are hi, you? Hi, everybody. Hi, hi. How's yep. it going? Oh, yeah, we weren't sure we we're going to have a meeting. It was. I know. I'm glad it worked out, though. Well, me too. I, that last meeting today was a real difficult one with our audio challenges. So I'm glad we could have some, somewhat of a straightforward meeting. Yeah. Cross your fingers, knock on wood. Yeah, well, I know, I'm finding wood. Everything's laminate around here, so. <laughs> yeah, good was... evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. We're gathering. Can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Patrick, are you, uh, you, you're going without your glasses then, huh? Uh, I got LASIK maybe like three weeks ago, two and a half weeks wow, ago. Wow! Look at you, a new look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I can, I can see fully, um, but no glasses, uh, okay. unless, unless the, uh, the commission demands it, then I'll, oh. I'll go ahead and put them back on. <laughs> we might miss them. We'll see. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Our chairwoman. Can you guys see me? Yes, we can see you. You're right in front of a big wave. Okay, cool. Just uh, so I'm not seeing all of us on my screen right now, so I wanted to make sure. Are you on a phone or a? No, I'm I'm on my computer. Oh, that's. Yeah, I only I only see four boxes myself. Uh, go to your view screen. Yeah, you can switch it. Go to your view screen in the upper right hand corner and see if you can switch it to gallery or there side we go. Side. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You might have been getting no, hold on. Audio? I don't. Ah. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, no secrets now. Technology is wonderful. Yeah. Sherwoman, I think you have a quorum. You're muted. I'm muted. Oh, well, that does not help. Okay. <laughs> it's one of those, um, another strange technology day. So I'm, I'm glad that we could all be here and um, Granicus got back online. Um, yes. So uh, 
I will now uh, call our uh, June 2nd meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission to order. Welcome everybody. It looks like we have um, some, uh, some participants from the community, so that is great. Um, let's uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And um, Mr. Jones, um, would you do the honor and lead us and everybody unmute your mic? Sure. All right, everybody. Uh, if you want to stand or sit, it's fine. Place your hand over your heart. Repeat after me. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to, and the, to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, and liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. Well done in chorus. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Um, so now we're um, at, um, oh, roll call, please. Chair Pizer Mays. Here. Vice Chair Elman. Here. Commissioner Lay. Present. Commissioner Horowitz. Here. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Nichols. Um, now we head uh, down to announcements. Um, and um, I'll go around and see if anyone has announcements. Um, I just wanted to um, start off by acknowledging and congratulating our new um, city council member, um, Mr. Raymond Jackson. So I'm um, excited um, to, that we have a new council member in place and um, we, I'm, I'm sure I'll look forward to working with him. Um, so let me start with um, Vice Chair Elman. Do you have any announcements? Nope, I got, you covered it. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, Commissioner Lang. No, not this time. Okay, uh, Commissioner Horowitz. Nope, not today. Thank you, though. Okay, well, then I'm going to go down the list of a few little things. Um, let me see, what did I write down here? So, um, events are back. Yay, that's an announcement. We are hashtag summer ready. And I wanted to remind everybody that um, our recreation program brochure is online on the city's website at hbconnect at hermosabeach.gov. So check out the offerings. Um, we're hoping to have, uh, I think, and we will have a better summer this year. So excited about that. And it was wonderful to see volleyball back this weekend, live music um, on the pier and elsewhere. Um, I want to mention there's a beach cleanup um, this coming weekend, uh, June 6th at 11 a.m. north of the pier, hosted by Friends of the Park and Leadership Hermosa. And um, before our next meeting, but towards the end of this month, Leadership Hermosa, um, we understand, is moving forward with their Valley for All project. And um, uh, it'll be, uh, it should be done, you know, in time for 4th of July. Um, and then just finally, there's, I wanted to mention that it is um, uh, Pride Month and um, we have an exciting um, community project planned, or I shouldn't say we, but others in the community are leading an effort um, with um, LA, with the LA, with LA Supervisor Janice Hahn's office um, and um, a youth in our um, in our community, um, Izzy Bakayao is um, heading efforts to um, coordinate painting um, a lifeguard tower um, just north of the pier. So more details to follow on that, but that should be a fun project for the community to sign up for. And um, I guess with that, I'll close my announcements. Um, and we will move on to, we'll skip over presentations. We have no presentations this evening. Um, and that brings us to um, uh, Mr. Um, Jones, our interim community resources manager and um, uh, miscellaneous items and reports. Perfect. Um, on the COVID-19 updates, as you stated earlier, yes. that uh, <laughs> programs are uh, coming online. Uh, we're very excited. The uh, registration uh, for the classes and programs are brisk. So that's a good thing. Uh, we also wanted to re re remind everyone, of course, that the state of California 
has stated that on June 15th, 2021, all COVID-19 restrictions will be lifted. So we're waiting to see if that's going to come true because they're starting to get their ducks in line. But uh, that's what everybody's been working towards uh, in order to uh, assist in getting all of our other functions back up and running and hitting those dates. Staff have been working on reopening uh, the rental program on our buildings and uh, theater, uh, reopening the theater program, uh, the theater itself, the large theater, the small theater still has some restrictions because of space challenges uh, based on the current restrictions, but we'll see if that releases after the 15th. And uh, we're also looking to reopen our usage and rentals for the parks. So uh, all things are coming back online. I know that uh, the city of Hermosa sponsored uh, with LA County Public Health vaccinations last weekend uh, at down at the pier. So um, a lot of things, positive things are happening. Uh, keep you know, knocking on wood and fingers crossed that we can get ourselves uh, out of this and move forward into more of a, a normal lifestyle. That, and then regarding the uh, updates on item B, regarding items previously on the commission agenda, uh, the city council did approve the DB special event that you approved last month uh, to be placed on the, uh, the books. So Lisa has coordinated that and did an excellent job in her presentation to the city council. And that's all I have for you tonight. Great, thank you. Uh do you know if the city has scheduled any additional uh, vaccine clinics? I haven't heard of any at this time, um, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they won't be because mm -hmm. LA County Public Health is really interested in, they have mobile vaccination clinics that are taking place all over the place. And uh, Brandy uh, Villanueva with mm -hmm. our emergency management coordinator has been trying to get things going, but I, they had a, a relatively good turnout. I mean, for being in a very public location, I think they had, I don't know, 20 or 25 vaccinations. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, did any, um, do any of my uh, fellow commissioners have uh, questions of staff from the report? No, okay. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jones. You're welcome. Um, Okay, so let's move on to, um, let's see, move on to public comment, item number uh, seven, seven on the agenda for those following along. Uh, and anyone wishing to address the commission on items pertaining to parks and recreation that are not listed on the agenda may do so at this time. The Brown Act generally prohibits the commission from taking action on a matter not listed on the posted agenda. Comments from the public are limited to three minutes per speaker. And if uh, there's an item later on in the agenda that you want to speak to now, go ahead and speak now. But, um, you know, that's your time to speak on this item. Um, and um, with that said, um, Ms. Nichols, um, do we have anyone for um, public comment at this time? I do, someone, I do have someone on the list for the general public comment section, and that is Jack Levy. So Jack, if you're on the line, you uh, may speak now. If you've dialed in, please hit star six to unmute yourself. Good. Do we have anyone for um, public comment at this time? I do someone, I do. Okay, so it seems that Jack is not on the line. Um, so now we can just open it up to anyone who wishes to speak um, for general public comment at this time. And just um, a reminder, if you've dialed in, you need to hit star six to unmute yourself. And we have no one. Okay. Okay, we'll close uh, public comment then um, at this time. And uh, we will move on to, uh, we'll skip over again, correspondence. Um, we do not have any correspondence this evening. 
Um, and we will go to item number nine, consent consent calendar. Um, is there, um, are there any um, items from the consent calendar that uh, commissioners uh, wish to pull? Okay. Um, I actually do want to um, just uh, briefly pull um, item A, April um, 2021 department activity report, just because I want to ask a couple of quick questions. So, um, so I will pull that. Um, and um, does anyone want to make a, a motion then um, on uh, the remaining item? To make a motion to approve the regular meeting action minutes of May 4th, 2021. Second that. Lisa will call the roll. Chair Pizer Mays. Aye. Vice Chair Elman. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Aye. And Commissioner Horowitz. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That motion passes. Um, and um, so now um, to item 10, items removed from the consent calendar for separate discussion. Um, the reason that I um, pulled this item is I just wanted to clarify, I was reading through the activity report and um, I noticed uh, a nice increase in memberships for um, three um, popular activities in the city for our skate park memberships, our tennis memberships and our pickleball memberships. And I just wanted to clarify, were those um, were those from this last month, or I mean this last April, or were those from earlier last year? I wasn't quite sure whether or not those were um, an increase over the prior month. Like we know each month year. the incre increase from the month before. So it's an increase from March. Okay, of this year? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, that's great. That's, um, that's great to know. I just know that some nice things, um, um, if they're on a form, maybe some nice they um, get kind of uh, pasted over. And I just wanted to clarify, and I um, thought that those were really nice, um, positive numbers and show activity picking up in the city. So I just wanted to clarify wow. that. And then um, in, in regards to filming, um, I know this is for April, but I was wondering, and we had two permits uh, pulled in um, April, but I was wondering, um, how May is looking? Are we getting any um, filming requests for May? Did we get filming requests for May? We did. I think we have two or three that will we be reporting for May. Actually. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, just curious. I'm just kind of tracking that in all, all my different worlds. So yeah. <laughs> appreciate that. Of course. Okay. Um, thank you. Those are my questions. Did anyone else have uh, questions on this? I do not see any. Okay, so um, then we're ready for a motion. I can make a motion to approve the April 2021 Department Activity Report. I'll, I'll second. second. <laughs> Go ahead, Yanni. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay. Okay, roll call. Chair Pizer Mays. Aye. Vice Chair Elman. Yes. Commissioner Lang. Aye. And Commissioner Horowitz. Yes. Great. The, the motion passes. Okay, uh, public hearings. We have no public hearings this evening. Um, now we are at matters for commission consideration. Uh, first item, I will, um, I believe I am looking um, to you, Ms. Nichols, for a presentation. Yes, you are. Good evening, commissioners. Um, this first item is staff's recommended approval of a fee waiver in the amount of $2,500 for the California Great Santa Stroll event on Saturday, December 21st. Included on page three of attachment one in your staff report for this item is a breakdown of the fees which qualify for a fee waiver. The California Great Santa Stroll was approved at our April meeting. The event includes a walk for all ages where participants are encouraged to dress as Santa Claus to celebrate the holiday season. All the event proceeds benefit the programs and activities put on by Michael's Learning Place, which is an organization that supports children and adults with developmental disabilities. 
If you have any additional questions, I have asked Gage, an event representative, to be on the line tonight, and I'm available for questions as well, of course. And that concludes my staff report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. And does anyone, um, do any commissioners, um, by show of hands, um, have any questions? Uh, yes, Commissioner Horowitz. Um, I don't know if it needs restating as I stated it back in April, but I just wanted to remind the, my fellow commissioners and the public that um, in order to be fully transparent, that I am an unpaid volunteer for Michael's Learning Place. And um, I had previously consulted with the city's attorney's office that this position does not prevent me from participating under the Political Reform Act. Um, and that I'm confident I can separate my interest that I have with Michaels with um, uh, my interest with the city and my vote tonight will be solely as a neutral city official and reflect what I believe is in the best interest of the city and the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. And were there any questions um, for either vice chair from vice chair um, Elman or commissioner Lang? Okay. Oh, yes. No, not, not really. I just wanted to, again, say thank you. It's such a wonderful sight to see. And um, I just, it's so nice, again, to see all the Santas, but to know exactly what is this is working towards is, uh, means a lot. So, and, and I, I, I know that Tracy's worked with them, but I just, I just think this is fabulous and whatever we can do to help. So, thank you. Okay, um, my question, uh, more of, um, thank you, um, Paige, for being here. Um, my question is more of staff. I just was wondering, um, in terms of overall fee waiver grants this year, um, I was just kind of figuring out if we ha um, can do up to 2,500 each, or, um, we can do up to eight. And I was just wondering, you know, um, of course, this has been up to this point a strange year again. But um, I was just wondering um, how we're doing in terms of requests versus um, availability of funds. So this is actually only in our second request this year. Mm -hmm. So we did give another 2,500 to another organization. So this would be um, 5,000 total if we approve this tonight and council did approve 20,000 for the year. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so we're doing okay. Good, okay. Good. So let's um, let's then um, open this up to uh, public comment. Um, if we have anyone um, that wishes to to um, address the commission, this is Paige Sachs. I'm the development director at Michael's Learning Place. I just wanted to say thank you to all of you commissioners for. Um, uh, approving our event for December 11th. Um, we are really excited about coming back and um, just gathering the community and, and bringing hopefully a lot of Santas and festive uh, people to the Hermosa Beach area. So thank you. Yes, um, Paige, how many did, were there at last year's event? We estimated it was about 600 participants last year. So we're hoping to do the same and, and hopefully increase that number this year. I think thinking that people are probably pretty excited to, to come out and, and gather a little bit again. Okay, okay. So, so you think that probably um, kind of the word of mouth and uh, people that participate, that'll help to um, get the number up to um, where you're estimating around a thousand or so? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and did this break a world's record? No, the record is actually eighteen thousand Santas uh, somewhere in Europe. So I think we're gonna have to do this a couple times before we get close. <laughs> well, let's maybe add these up year to year. <laughs> eighteen thousand is a lot of Santas. You know, of Santa, but oh my gosh, wow. Because <laughs> uh, I, I was, yeah, because I, yeah, 600 was a pretty impressive sight, I must say. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any other public um, comments on this item? We do not. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll bring it um, 
back to the commission and um, for discussion and deliberation and um, a possible motion then. Um, who would like to start off or continue? <laughs> Barbara, you're muted. I don't have anything new to add. Um, I'm happy to make a motion when we're ready. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, Commissioner Lang. I was going to volunteer to make a motion as well, but okay. Barbara, go right ahead. Yeah. I, I, uh, well, hey, there's, um, <laughs> we're going to need a second. So, <laughs> okay. And then um, I know that um, you spoke earlier on this, Commissioner Horowitz. Um, so I, um, yeah, I don't have anything to add. I got my questions answered. Um, so I guess um, we are likely ready for a motion. Well, I'll make a motion that we approve the fee waiver uh, for uh, uh, Michael's Learning Place uh, for the California Great Santa Stroll on Saturday, December 11th, 2021 on Pier Plaza and the Strand. I'll second that. Okay, roll call. Chair Pizer May. Aye. Vice Chair Elman. Yes. Commissioner Lang. Yes. And Commissioner Horowitz. Yes. Great, thank you. The motion passes. Okay, very good. Um, on to um, B under um, matters for commission consideration. And um, again, I believe uh, Ms. Nichols, that is you. Correct. This next item is for the recommended approval of the POR Sandy Saute on Saturday, September 11th, which is a race in the sand on the north side of the pier to encourage a healthy and active lifestyle while raising funds to benefit families impacted by pancreatic cancer. Staff has no concerns with this event. I wanna note that this event would fall on the same day as Coastal Cleanup, which our department holds in conjunction with Heal the Bay. However, both of these events are relatively low impact and we anticipate no conflicts between the two and they are at different locations as well. We're at the pier head with our coastal cleanup. If you have any additional questions, I have asked Pat, the event representative to be on the line tonight as well. And I'm available for questions too. And that concludes my staff report. Very good, thank you. Um, questions of staff. Okay. I think the um, attachments were all very uh, thorough. So, um, so then um, why don't we um, um, hear from, from Pat um, since they, uh, since, is it he or she decided to join us? He. he. Okay, since he decided to join us and, um, and then we'll um, open it up to public comment. Yeah, this would be the third time we're requesting to do the race. Uh, the last two you, you've approved. Um, last year was impacted by the pandemic. And it really taught us to do things virtually as well as um, in person. So I think we had more participants last year doing this virtually because everybody was just at home and looking for things to do. So it really helped us in that in terms of that going forward. But having something in person really brings a different element to things. Um, and we're really excited to do this again in Hermosa, which is our hometown. So, you know, with this event, we, you know, attract new people to join us in our community, but also bring out a lot of the families that we help out that have been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So we're really excited to do this in our hometown and continue a pretty fun tradition of, you know, uh, telling people, you know, to come join us for, you know, the healthy, active lifestyle. So thanks for the help, Lisa, and hopefully um, everything gets approved. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pat. Um, do we have, um, Lisa, do we have anyone else for public comment? We do not. Okay, okay. Okay, well, we will uh, again bring this back to the uh, commission uh, for discussion. Um, uh, Vice Chair Elman. Uh, uh, not much to say other than, um, unfortunately, um, a very dear friend of mine uh, died from pancreatic cancer. So uh, I plan on supporting this um, tonight, and I also plan on supporting it uh, when, uh, when you're here. And thank you very much for all the work you've tried to do. Thank yeah. you. 
Yeah, this is indeed a tough one. Um, Commissioner Lang. I'm just no? ready to make a, um, a motion. Okay, okay, sounds good. And um, Commissioner Horowitz. I'll be ready to second it. Okay, it looks like um, we have a plan here. <laughs> so um, I, um, yeah, I have nothing um, further. Um, yeah, I'm very familiar with the devastation of this um, this cancer, and um, and it's a nice um, a nice healthy activity. So um, I'm going to um, turn this back over to you, Commissioner Lang. I'd like to make a motion to approve the addition of the POR Sandy Saute on the beach north of the pier on Saturday, September 11th, 2021 to the 2021 special event calendar. I will second that. Okay, roll call. Commissioner Pizer Mays. Aye. Chair Pizer Mays. Uh, Vice Chair Elman. Yes. Commissioner Lang. Aye. And Commissioner Horowitz. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, that motion passes. Very good, everybody. Um, okay, we are now at um, item C um, under matters for um, commission consideration. And um, that I understand will be presented to us by Mr. Jones. That's correct. All okay. Right. I uh... I will go ahead and get my notes here. I'm ready to, I'm gonna give you a, a bit of a overview of our process. Uh, most of it, of course, is redundant within the item, but I think it's important for the benefit of, of all to hear the process that this, this has gone through so that everybody's aware. Um, good evening. Chairwoman Pfizer Mains and members of the Parks, Recreation and Community Resources Advisory Commission. My name is John Jones. I'm the interim Community Services Resources Manager. As you all know, in March 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic hit the United States, causing the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health to take over the public health management for all municipalities, closing all city tennis and pickleball courts. Prior to this time, the Kelly Pickleball Courts were open for general use Mondays through Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for a total of 84 hours a week. When the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health allowed for the reopening of tennis and pickleball courts, they issued very strict protocols that were mandated to allow usage on these courts. As a result of these protocols, the city implemented additional precautions to reduce the risk of spreading COVID-19, which included the reduction of usage hours at both the tennis and pickleball courts and requirement of court monitors to oversee these operations. The Kelly pickleball courts are reopened for general use Tuesdays through Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and Fridays and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. for a total of 28 hours a week. With the reopening of the Kelly Pickleball Court, staff in the Department Use Policy Subcommittee worked to determine what was the best usage of the Kelly Pickleball Courts should, should be to limit the noise impacts to nearby residents. The subcommittee tested the use of quieter equipment between February 9th and 13th of this year to determine if the usage of this equipment would lessen the noise impact. Unfortunately, the results of the feedback after this test were not conclusive and had mixed results. Given these mixed results, the subcommittee worked with staff to develop an action plan for the use of the Kelly pickleball courts at Clark Complex. This action plan is attachment one, was ident identified the pickleball stakeholders focus group that consists of representatives from the local neighborhood and pickleball interest with the goal to work towards consensus building to achieve viable solutions or options to the noise and use impacts caused by the pickleball courts. As I said, that's attachment one. This plan called for the Pickleball Stakeholders Focus Group to meet weekly starting March 31st and continue week, weekly until a final resolution or options had been determined. With this final resolution or options, then the Pickleball Stakeholders Focus Group would present this information to the Park, Recreation, and Community Resources Advisory Commission for the recommendation to the City Council. So 
Uh, on Wednesday the 31st, the first meeting was held, starting with the Pickleball Stakeholders Focus Group introductions and for the group to review the action plan. After the group approved the action plan, another meeting was set for the following week. That's attachment two. On Wednesday, April 7th, the second meeting was held. Within this meeting, potential options to mitigate the noise issues were discussed and tentatively agreed to by both the representatives of the nearby residents and the pickleball interest. The outcome of this agreement between the parties were for new proposed hours for use of the Kelly pickleball courts, as well as modifying the reservation and usage protocols, attachment three. On Wednesday, April 14th, the third meeting was held. Within this meeting, the Pickleball Stakeholders Focus Group discussed continuing the use of the court reservation system and fees to mirror the reservation system implemented for the community center's tennis courts. The group felt that the Kelly Pickleball Court's focus on use by Hermosa Beach residents was important, so the membership program could continue to be required to manage this use, as only residents could gain membership to reserve time at the, Pelle at the Kelly Pickleball Courts. The group also felt it important to allow for reservations to be allowed for a two hour reservation time instead of the current one hour reservation time. In allowing for the two hour reservation times, it will limit the amount of available time slots available and will allow for more social interactive play to take place for the pickleball players. The group agree agreed that the drop in play would only be allowed when no reservation has been made. This would also serve to limit a non resident use as only Hermosa Beach residents are able to purchase a membership, which grants them access to the reservation system and the ability to see when there are no reservations on the courts. Lastly, the group agreed to allow Pickleball community to offer and host periodic Saturday afternoon clinics and lessons for new beginner Pickleball players to encourage new players to learn the game and want to use the courts. That's attachment four. On Wednesday, April 21st, the fourth meeting was held. Within this meeting, the group was to review the previously agreed upon proposed hours of usage for the Kelly Pickleball Courts, as well as review the agreed upon reservation and usage protocols. Discussion ensued with this review, within this review, and it came apparent that the members of the subcommittee were not in support with the previously agreed upon usage hours for the local, from the local neighborhood representatives and the pickleball representatives. Discussion escalated to a point that there would be no benefit to continue so staff intervened and gained agreement that this discussion should be continued at a later date. That's attachment five. On Wednesday, May 12th, 2021, the Pickleball Stakeholders Focus Group held their meetings without the subcommittee to discuss adding additional time usage options for the Kelly Pickleball Courts and review the summary of proposed actions by this group. Within this meeting, a suggestion was made from one of the members of the local neighborhood representatives stating that she felt that 39 hours of use would be appropriate. Discussion ensued and it was agreed upon by the group that the hours of 45 or 48 or 51 hours of use were acceptable. That's attachment six. The item, the agenda item before you tonight is the outcome of many weeks of focused meetings that have spanned over the past two months. The Pickleball Stakeholders Focus Group has worked diligently in their efforts to find viable options to limit noise impacts and concluded, and concluded that the primary solution needed to include options for reduced hours of play. Ultimately, after much discussion and evaluation of several viable options, the Pickleball Stakeholders Focus Group agreed the best solution to both the nearby residents adjacent to Clark Complex and the Hermosa Beach resident pickleball players would be to limit the usage time at the Kelly Pickleball Courts to five days a week, allowing either 45, 48, or 51 hours a week. These usage hour options are listed within the summary of proposed actions on, as well as the modifications to the reservation protocols and allowances on attachment seven. Therefore, the Pickleball Stakeholders Focus Group and the Interim Community Resources Manager recommend that the Parks, Recreation, and Community Resources Advisory Commission approve the proposed hours option two. Hours option two is the 48 hour option. It's the middle of the line option is what everyone had agreed upon previously and then decided to, to provide other options. So I lean towards the middle and the updated use policies for the Kelly Pickleball Courts and send the recommendation to the city council for final approval. The option two is closed Sundays and Mondays. Tuesdays would be 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Wednesdays through Saturday would be 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
for a total of 48 hours a week. I do want to mention that included in this agenda item are some emails that have been received by staff from various individuals of the community. Uh, those are considered the supplementals that you might have received uh, some within the item and also some today from staff. This now concludes my presentation. I know that members of the stake of the Pickleball Stakeholders uh, Focus Group are online tonight. So if you wanted to ask them questions, you can also. Um, and I am also here to ask, answer any questions you may have. That concludes my report and I'm happy to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. Lauren? Yes, yes, let me uh, start with you since you have been part of the subcommittee. Well, I, I, I got my timing off here. I should have said something before uh, John made his comments. So I, I have something to read to everybody. Uh, it's come to my attention that my ability to be an open-minded and impartial uh, member has come into question. Although I'm disappointed this might be of concern to anyone, I can assure the residents and my fellow commissioners that I couldn't that that couldn't be further from the truth. I have done everything in my power to be a good listener to the residents near the pickleball courts as well as the pickleball players. I can assure everyone I have not made up my mind and I am open to everyone's ideas. In fact, I look forward to hearing everyone's ideas this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. And um, so, so just to kind of reiterate, right now we're just asking questions we're not gonna discuss. So we're just asking questions of staff. We're gonna wait till we hear, listen and hear public comment, and then we'll bring it back for any sort of discussion about the options and everything else after we've heard from the community. Um, I do um, have a question um, of, um, of staff, and I just wanted to uh, ask um, what we did in terms of notification um, for tonight's meeting and the discussion of um, of these revisions to the hours and policies. Uh, thank you, Chairwoman. Um, so uh, we had sent out to uh, all property owners 500 feet surrounding Clark Complex uh, a notification letter that identified this meeting and time and link, as well as the three proposed options on the table, the 45 hour option, the 48 hour option, the 51 hour option, as well as taking that information and posted uh, signs up around the pickleball courts and the fence line for those that might live around the area to see that this meeting has been noticed. There were 498 notices sent out to the property owners in and around Clark Complex. Okay, thank you. I uh, appreciate um, that information. Um, let's see. And okay, um, did anybody else have any questions of staff on this? Yes, uh, Commissioner Horowitz. Um, thank you for that question, Chairperson and John, for answering. When was that notification mailed out? That notification, Lisa, I think went out two weeks ago. Okay. Correct. Now we we tried to make sure we gave at least a two week notice. Okay. I know that I've been told sometimes that isn't our forte, but yeah. I know we went out really early. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. And um yeah, we've obviously received some responses about this. Um is it in line with what we'd expect or too hard to really? I think it's too early to tell at this point. Yeah. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Sounds good, fair enough. Um, in, um, let me just um, ask um, my fellow commissioners one um, last time before we go to public um, comment, if you had any specific questions of staff before we do that. Com yes, Vice Chair Elman. There, there are a couple questions here and um, whether we're asking questions, I ha I, I have asked Lisa to be, uh, and I'm I'm, appro I'm hoping this is the appropriate time to go over the reservation system because I'm I know that there will be comments made uh, by people about um, the positives and the negatives. So if you could go over the reservation system that we're using for pickleball versus what we do for um, tennis 
and how it works, that would be helpful. You got it. Okay, so our pickleball membership program actually mirrors our tennis membership program that's in place for the community center tennis courts. So Hermosa Beach residents can purchase a pickleball membership for $15 a year, which allows them access to the online reservation system to reserve court time at $8 an hour. Reservations are given on a first come first serve basis to these members and can be made at least one day prior, but not more than three days in advance for one hour maximum per day. Tonight's proposal does include making reservations available at least one day prior, but not more than four days in advance and for two hours maximum per day. Um, the most popular reservation days currently are Fridays and Saturdays, which we're um, on those days we were pretty much booked throughout the day on each court. Um, without a reservation, courts are available on a first come first serve basis to all free of charge without a reservation. Yeah, so a little more information. The committee as a whole, and I wanted to, I, I, I failed to express who was on the committee. I will, I will do that. Um, it was very important for them to make sure that uh, residents were the primary focused benefactors of our, our, our pickleball courts. Uh, I've been, I've been uh, finding out that from other uh, entities who in and around our uh, Hermosa Beach, they are starting to restrict uh, non-resident usage uh, by limiting their amount of time they can get or the making sure the residents gets first dibs at it. And so it was important to the committee that our residents in Hermosa uh, get, get, the, get the main part of the apple, as you might say. Uh, and so therefore those that uh, the, the, the any vacant, any non-reservation times are really only gonna be able to be seen by those that are members who are residents because they can then see online and see when there's no nothing reserved and they know to come down and they could use the courts for free. Uh, but it, 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 it's, it's really focused on residents. And I did want to mention, um, you know, I want to thank, uh, you know, everyone that participated as, as this committee, it was uh, a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of energy. Uh, and I know that uh, Commissioner Elman uh, and former Commissioner Guheen uh, initiated the, the process for the subcommittee. Uh, local neighborhood representatives were uh, Ms. Gail Rose, Mr. Rob Blair, and Mr. Rupert Smith uh, pinch hit when Mr. Blair couldn't make it. Uh, and then our pickleball interest representatives were Ms. Mary Young and Mr. Rob Cole. So they, I believe, are on the line tonight also if they happen to have any questions for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, were there any other uh, questions? Yes. Well, um, I, I did uh, have a discussion with the city attorney and he felt it was important that I share um, some of the uh, different sites that I use to get my information so that uh, everyone knew where my thoughts, uh, where my thought process came from. And so um, I did spend time on the pickleball portal and pickleball drive uh, reading about where problems are and what the positives and the negatives are of pickleball and reservation systems and prices people pay. And um, I talked, as you, you all know, I spent a lot of time talking to different cities, such as Walla Walla, Washington, the village of Ridgewood, New Jersey, Castle Rock, uh, Colorado, um, and Manhattan and El Segundo. I spent quite a bit of time talking to uh, Pacific Grove, California, as they have a um, their size and physical location of their courts um, mirror ours. So I was able to discuss over time how things uh, worked out with them. So um, my information came from making lots and lots of phone calls, Punta Gorda, Florida, and. Um, so I, I really wanted to, to spend the time to get as much information on successes and failures that other cities have used um, for their pickleball programs. Thank you. And, and Chairwoman, I'm sorry, I failed to mention too. Um, I did uh, ask the city attorney where we are in the litigation efforts of the other two courts that are still closed. And he uh, informed me that they're in discovery at this point, discovery process of, this, of the legal suit, 
and they have a, a court date scheduled for August 12th of this year okay. to proceed. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and um, I guess um, I could disclose as well because we wanna make um, fair and informed decisions that I have along this um, journey uh, called some um, neighboring cities as well. And um, I understand that even though they may be quote, as, as you said, Mr. Jones, open um, and um, you know, open to non-residents in, in theory, um, in practicality, what happens is residents are given an edge. So by the time that non-residents can um, dial up on the phone or you know uh, 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 get online, um, pretty much the courts are booked. So um, I that was just an interesting um, in, in support of your point, uh, what what you were finding out. Um, okay, well thank you. Um, I. Any other questions? And we can ask questions of staff after public comment as well, of course. Um, are we are we ready for public comment? I think so. well, let's um let's go ahead and open this to public comment, uh, Ms. Nichols. Okay, so I do have um, some speakers on my list. So I'm going to begin by inviting Michelle to speak. And Michelle, I do not know how to pronounce your last name. So it begins with I, and it looks like you're ready to speak. This is me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Awesome. Hi, this is Michelle Ipiola. Um, I want to just give you a quick rundown on what support means to me and the need for more hours, especially evening and weekends for working folks. So what I would really like to see is 51 hours and no equipment restrictions. I'm a Hermosa Beach resident. I have been for over nine years and counting. I live on 7th Street. I'm a 40 year old business professional. I work eight to five or 6 p.m. or later. And I live in Hermosa because of the walkability and the activities available. I also play competitive beach volleyball. I played in five AVPs. Um, so I take sports really seriously. But pickleball has changed my life, especially as I've gotten older, I've had to find other activities. Um, you know, I'm hoping for more hours at some point, but we'll take what we can get for now. But with the current hours and my job, I'm not able to get in pickleball time in Hermosa. Uh, Hermo pickleball has been an activity to help me decompress from long work days when I can't play volleyball due to darkness during the winter, when the daylight hours are shorter, or even in the evenings um, after work, if I have a long work day when I can't play volleyball, um, or if I can't play volleyball due to injuries or wanting to do something else, wanting to bond with friends in a healthy way. Sometimes my friends and I'll do happy hour and go to Hermosa, the plaza before dinner, before for dinner or after for dinner. And the shorter hours have forced us to find other places to play. And you've mentioned some of these cities, El Segundo, uh, Venice. We've been playing tournaments wherever we can, but that means that there's lost dining revenue for the city of Hermosa. So just want to point that out. Um, but, you know, really to me being able to work so I can live in Hermosa and afford it <laughs> and to be able to play. Um, I really need those hours extended. That would be awesome if you guys could do that. That's it. Do you get, how does it end? Do you ask me questions or do we just go to the next person? We, we go to the next person. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate you, um, you um, checking in with us tonight and sharing your, um, your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Next, I have Geraldine Poon. Hi, um, my name is Geraldine, and I've been a Hermosa Beach resident for about five years. I love our community, and I recently became a homeowner here. Uh, a few years ago, I just wanted to let you know kind of how I got introduced to pickleball. A few years ago, I went by the pickleball courts in Hermosa and looked through the fence. Um, someone came out and encouraged me to come by any day after 9 a.m. to learn about the game. Um, when I did, I experienced the warmest welcome. Everyone was friendly, and I borrowed a paddle, immediately jumped in, and quickly became obsessed. Started going nearly daily. That was when I had a flexible student schedule, um, and now I currently have a full-time job. My schedule changes every week. I work very long hours, making it difficult to plan ahead, and this is why I support the 51 hour um, option. Um, 
I haven't been able to play in Hermosa because it's been difficult to make reservations. So now I drive to Culver, Culver City, Santa Monica, Redondo, and Inglewood. Um, and I just, I used to love just being in Hermosa. Um, I miss those days of playing there. Um, I used to just hop on my bike and head to the courts. I played for a few hours and then um, develop an appetite and head and bike up to Vons or a local restaurant. Or my favorite was when I could play on a Friday and also visit the farmer's market. The community that I've met through Pickleball in Hermosa is really wonderful. People of all ages. Um, I've become friends with a high school student um, named Nathan, and we've gone and drawn in our own little court in a parking lot. I've gone to another um, pickleball player, neighbor Chewie's house to play Mahjong. I've gone sailing with another pickleball friend, Kent. Um, so I support the option to reserve longer time slots to have expense, expanded hours. Um, and I also um, eventually would like to play in tournaments. So it's important to me to play with standard equipment and balls. And I just, I love the sport. And I hope that you can support, support us in the community um, in, in any way that you can. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Geraldine. Thanks. Okay, next I have Mary Young. Mary, if you're on the line, just a reminder, if you've dialed in to hit star six to unmute yourself. I can see that someone's trying to speak, but I'm, oh, yeah, but it's, uh, we can't hear you. So I'll, Mary, if that's you, I'm gonna give you another opportunity um, once we get through the other speakers here before we close out the speakers list. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, we can, perfect. Yeah, I, I had to get off my earbuds. It wasn't letting me do the pound six for some reason. So sorry about that. No problem. All good, all good now? Okay. Yes, you're um, good to go. Anyway. <laughs> Good, e good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Mary Young, and I've been a Hermosa Beach homeowner for over 30 years, and I'm also an avid pickleball player. Uh, I was recently privileged, along with Rob Cole, to represent the players on the focus group that you've heard about from John. Our mission being to find a compromise proposal with the neighbors who are impacted by the pickleball noise. Um, I must confess I was pessimistic about this. Uh, I thought the nearby neighbors were intent on closing the courts, and the players are passionate about having more court time in our city. So I'm thinking to myself, how the heck is this focus group possibly gonna be successful? Well, I'm happy to report that I was wrong. Through the group, we met three of the neighbors, all of whom were cooperative and reasonable. They had valid points. We acknowledge that the pickleball pinging can be annoying, but the neighbors also acknowledge the many health and social benefits of this wonderful sport. What amazed me was that all of the group were open to compromise. Pre-COVID, as you heard, the Kelly courts were open 84 hours, then cut during COVID to 28. Well, there's a lot of middle ground there between 84 and 28, with an average being 56 hours. Another factor that you heard, just heard is that Manhattan and El Segundo have taken steps to favor their residents. So it's now difficult to get courts in our neighboring cities. So I came into the focus group fairly intent on closing the courts a maximum of one day per week and having evening hours for working players. The neighbors couldn't support that. Um, and they proposed two days close and a 6 p.m. close on several of the evenings. They also had a preference for a Sunday close and closing two days in a row. So after some back and forth, we came up with the proposal that is before you. It is not going to please either side 100%. That's the nature of compromise. <clears throat> but all of us on the group agree that we can support it with our respective constituencies and that it's fair. I prefer the 51 hour alternative in order to give working players two weeknights of play. Also as part of the proposal, I have offered to conduct clinics to welcome new and beginner players. And I'm happy to do that on my own time at no cost to the city. 
it's really somewhat remarkable that the players and the neighbors were able to reach this compromise solution. I can only hope that the Parks and Rec Commission and ultimately City Council will support our efforts and approve this proposal. Thank you for your time. That's it for me. Great. Thank you, Mary. Okay, next I have Nathan Staso. Uh, can you hear me? We can. You're good to go. Cool. Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm, I'm Nathan Staso, and I'm 17. And I've been playing pickleball for around three years now. And um, I first started when my dad showed me, like we were just hitting some paddles and balls in my house. And it was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then we went to the court. And once I started playing on there, I loved it from there. And just became very addicted to it. And um, and once, and I loved playing there on the weekends. I could play there like almost every day after school. Um, and I could play with, and there it was mostly people who were way older than me and it was still a lot of fun playing with them, a lot of fun competitive games, uh, no matter the age. And, and then when this closed down during COVID, I just got really bored. And then after school, I just had almost nothing to do. And then now I had to drive to like a lot of places, at least like an hour away um, to just even play at all. And then, um, and then once restrictions uh, loosened, it was still like, it still wasn't the same and I missed all the people going there and almost nobody was going there and we still had to go through reservations and them. So I just like stopped going there completely. So I really hope we can get more hours there and get, I, I can understand like of the annoying noises from the neighbors and stuff. So we, we can probably reduce the hours from there, but definitely a major improvement on the hours. And then I can, and then because, uh, and then all, and then, cause then it will make my routine way better. And then after school, I'll be able to play more and I'll be and on the weekends. It'll be so easy for me and other people who live around here and just go play pickleball instead of like traveling at least 30 minutes or an hour away, just to even go play or have good games. Yeah. That's all to say. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Nathan. Okay, next I have Valerie Pierce. Yes, hello, can you hear me? We can. Oh, good, okay. Yeah, my name is Valerie Pierce. Um, I live at 1046 10th Street in Hermosa. Been here um, almost 30 years. Um, we used to have a lot of families, children, and after work crowds playing at the courts in Hermosa on evenings and weekends. And I feel like that was a group that was really left out with these uh, restricted hours. Um, we really left only Saturday during the day for them to play and I didn't think this was fair. Uh, I'm in support of the 51 hour plan. I think we need more uh, uh, daytime hours. We need some evening hours. And, um, you know, I have to, can comment also about the, the many times that we went over to some of the restaurants um, on Pure Avenue after um, after pickleball, and that made for a really great day. Um, the only other thing I was going to comment on was we really need to be able to book two hours at a time. If you can only if you can only book one hour, you show up, you practice a little, uh, and then by the time you're done with that, you're left with basically maybe 35, 40 minutes. And for most of us. If we have a two hour time slot, we have four people, um, everybody rotates or frequently people rotate two games with each partner and that takes about two hours. So really anything less than that is, uh, it, it, it almost doesn't make sense. Um, and that's really all I have to say. I, uh, I'm appreciative that everybody has worked together to try and make this um, possible. Um, that, that's it. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do I unmute my, do I mute myself again? I'll go ahead and do it for you. Thank Please you. Please take care of okay. it. Thank you, Valerie. Okay. Okay, next I have Brian Zerbel. 
Hello, commissioners. My name is Brian Zerbel. I've lived on 11th Street for 14 years and I'm one of a handful of remaining residents who's been impacted by pickleball here at Kelly Court. Um, I thought John did a great job summarizing the issues around the courts of the last year. And uh, I recognize you guys have been tasked to find some kind of compromise between the residents and those who enjoy the activity. Um, I am just grateful that we're finally considering proposals tonight that would reduce the hours of play from their pre-COVID levels. And just for context for all those calling in to support uh, the game tonight, uh, the issue um, is that the game never really belonged here. As you may recall, two years ago, the city contracted a firm to provide an acoustical analysis and they recommended several products to dampen the impact of the noise. I just, uh, just don't want us to forget that we did that and think about it. It's, uh, it seems remarkable to me that there's an entire market out there supporting multiple sound abating fence manufacturers. They're all catering specifically to reducing pickleball noise. Um, that suggests there's a broad understanding out there that courts within 500 feet of residential properties require sound abatement. Um, you know, I suspect staff determined the, the products that were researched back then, acoustic fence, acoustic blocks, and all the others. Um, I, re I respect that they're not a viable uh, solution to our current situation here, um, but it's not comforting to know that we spent all the money doing that research and learning that communities across the country have come to, come to understand that abatement is necessary uh, when the courts are so courts like this are so close to homes. Um, and then the only solution we're offering tonight is to ignore the irritant and debate if 45 or 48 or 51 hours is better. Uh, I just don't see the compromise in jumping from the 39 hours that Gail proposed, proposed in the committee uh, with the 51 that's now on the table. Um, and uh, I just wanted to follow up a quick note um, about the notification mailing. Uh, and John, I appreciate that you informed me that you'd tell Kelly when she returns from leave that uh, we should probably make this revision to our mailing system. But the mailing only went to property owners. Many of those impacted by the courts are renters and they were kept in the dark about the issues by their landlords. Uh, perhaps of note also residents who moved into those 498 homes that are impacted in the last year. They don't fully appreciate what 45 to 51 hours of pickleball and four full courts will sound like. Uh, so they may not be as familiar with this issue as others or, or be inspired to call in tonight. Um, finally, I realized the genie is out of the bottle on this thing. And I know we're not going back to no courts, but I just ask you tonight uh, to make the recommendation to council that you could live next to. I know you've got a tough gig. Um, thank you all for your time. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Okay, next I have Rob Cole. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, this is Rob Cole. Um, I live on 19th Street in Hermosa. I've lived here for 20 years. Um, I wanted to just thank, uh, start off by thanking uh, John Jones for his leadership to get us to this point. Um, he took uh, kind of a bunch of us municipal rookies that didn't know what we were doing and, and kind of guided us to the point of making a, a compromise that I think hopefully everybody can live with. I also want to thank uh, Gail Rose and Rob Blair and Rupert who pinched it for Rob a couple of times for negotiating in a really neighborly way. Um, there was never really a bad moment between anybody in the negotiations and it was great seeing people that, that are neighbors that disagreed on a issue that was important to all of them, but never getting testy or difficult. And I think everybody really uh, did that well. And I'm, I'm pretty proud of uh, Mary Young and myself who did the same for the players. There was pressure on us from other players to push for more time and longer hours and um, definitely lower fees but we took everybody's uh, point of view in mind and even, and to kind of exhibit that, all three of the recommendations are less than halfway between the current hours and the pre-COVID hours. So we tried to negotiate in 
a neighborly way ourselves, and I think we did that, and I'm glad we came up with something that everybody that was involved agreed to. Um, I hope that the people on the board that will vote on this understand the great social health, mental, physical advantages of this game. There's a reason it's the fastest growing sport in America. I won't go into too many details about it, but I know there's you have the ability to ask questions. So if anyone is unclear on that, I invite you to ask questions. I will tell you that I am 63 years old. I'm probably at the peak of my agility of my life. And Nathan, who's a, a teenager, and I can play a competitive game against one another. And there's probably no other physical event a 63-year-old could play against a teenager and be on the even plane. So it's a great social thing. I, I literally have hundreds of friends now in Hermosa Beach that I didn't know before I started playing pickleball. So the people that said it's a, a life changer uh, are, are really accurate. It's changed so many people's lives for the benefit, uh, for the better, excuse me. Um, I will tell you, it does kill me that tomorrow I'm going to play at Manhattan Heights when I used to love riding my bike to the courts in Hermosa Beach. Uh, as much as I like fishing with dynamite in Manhattan Beach, it kills me that I'm having lunch tomorrow there instead of the source or hook and plow in Hermosa Beach. But um, unfortunately, I have not been able to play in Hermosa Beach once since COVID because an hour just doesn't work. Um, it's not possible. Um, we've, we really tried to make this work for everybody, including the city. Um, to the gentleman that just spoke, I, I didn't catch his name. I understand your position, and I know Mary and the other players do too. That's why we agreed to cut the hours by less than halfway between what we wanted, which was what was before, and the, what the hours are now. And also, just to make you feel a little bit better, we also agreed or almost pushed for the highest price of any city around here, which will definitely lower the amount of action on the courts because given uh, anyone that lives in Manhattan Beach, they're not coming here to play because it costs so much more and it's more than any city in the area. So uh, I'm just really happy that all the people that are involved um, were able to negotiate in good faith and reach an agreement that we believe everybody can live with. And we, um, we all hope that uh, this can get through tonight and we can move forward to getting back to this healthy lifestyle that we've all learned to love. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Okay, so we still have many who have called in tonight. So to give everyone the opportunity to speak on this item, I will go down the list of all those who are tuned into the meeting or called into the meeting tonight who have not yet spoke. And depending on how are you how you are displayed on my list, I'll either call out your name or the last three digits of your phone number. Once called, please unmute yourself. Reminder that if you have dialed in, you do need to hit star six to unmute yourself. And please make sure to state your name and city of residence. If you wish not to speak and you're called upon, simply state so and we'll move on to the next person on the list. So I'd like to invite Gail Rose to speak, if she oh, would like. I would like to, thank you. All right, go ahead, Gail. Um, I was on the committee and um, I listened carefully to what the people who called in said. And if they're concerned about not being able to play after hours, uh, if they're working, these, these uh, option hours can be changed. I mean, they're not carved in granite and they, they could be a, a point where say on a Thursday, it could go from noon to nine o'clock instead of 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's really a flexible schedule. And I requested 39 because everybody, loves pickleball, we know that, but to live with it, constant sound when all of the courts are going is unbelievable. And it can't be compared to anything, any other sport. And that's why there's an issue. Otherwise, no one would ever complain. It's simply fun and um, everybody recognizes that. But to live with it perpetually, even two days off is is um, it's like heaven when it's not going on. Um, and you could even consider three days off and make the hours on the days that it's on longer. It's just that 
uh, the 51, I, the reason they say they want 51 is so that they can play later in the day, then I think the committees, the Parks and Rec could consider having it go later and start later and not have the morning hours or take a break in the middle of the day when it's not used as often. Those are flexibility items that that wouldn't necessarily make us have to go to 51 hours a week. I mean, we do have sleeping time that doesn't count. <laughs> when you talk about 51 hours, that's that's a lot during our, our outside time in the home where we live close by. By the way, I've lived here 42 years. So everybody talks about how important it is that this is the time that I always look forward to enjoying my home and my yard and my outside. And I think people should enjoy pickleball too. So um, I think the hours should be flexible to meet the needs of the pickleball community, but they don't necessarily have to be um, so over the top as far as more than um, 51 hours is way more than we were hoping for as residents. If you have little kids trying to sleep or if you're trying to work at home, forget it. People have moved away because of it. So anyway, thank you. And I the only reason I care is because I hear. <laughs> Otherwise, the game's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I'm Gail. Oh, Gail. I'm sorry. Thank you, Gail. Okay. Thank you, Gail. Appreciate you calling in and participating. Thank you, Gail. Next, I'd like to invite Christina Riley. Hello. Um, I guess I just wanted to address a couple of things. First and foremost, I'll say I'm in favor of the, the longer playing time, option number three. Um, we all, as Gail mentioned, work. So part of it is, of course, uh, getting court time either in the evenings or on the weekends. And since Sunday is already not an option, it is difficult. But beyond that, the other issue is with only two courts open, right now it is harder for me to book a pickleball court than it is for me to try and buy Coachella or Bottle Rock tickets. So I have to set my alarm to get up as early as possible. And even then about 50% of the time, the courts are already fully booked. Uh, so yes, it is an issue of wanting to play when I'm not working and I do work full time Monday through Friday, but it's also an issue of the more hours we have available to play, the more opportunities there are to play. Um, and right now with such a limited schedule, most of us don't get that opportunity because the courts are already booked. Um, so it's it's twofold for me. Um, and then the other issue, which I know someone else brought up was the ability to book for two hours at a time. Right now, you know, we, myself and my partner, along with other neighbors who play, and, and I do live within walking distance to Clark Field, uh, are always trying to coordinate each of us booking an hour back to back. And since things are already so difficult to book, that just adds another layer of frustration on everything. But one hour is, is not enough time to play when you factor in trying to warm up so that we all don't hurt ourselves. And then... Um, Last but not least, um, I would I would love the opportunity to you know try to consider playing on Sundays, even if it's a really short time period, or maybe at least until the other two courts can open up, because that would be very helpful. But in general, I'm a fan of the longer amount of time. I I do realize that the noise is an issue, and that a lot of people bought homes there before that noise was created. I live in a home off of pier before outdoor dining was a thing, and it is certainly louder for me, but ultimately I live near pier, and I understand that that comes with, with the changing of times and needs and wants of residents. So thank you. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Dennis Norman to speak. Hi, everybody. Thanks for the time. Uh, thanks for the good uh, presentations and the contributions from our neighbors. Uh, we are, my wife and I, uh, are uh, residents here of on 11th Street, so uh, in Cyprus, very close to the pickleball courts, and we're also active players. 
Um, for us, uh, really enlightening to listen and hear all the different points of views uh, and support uh, the collaboration here that's going on. Uh, only ask would be, and it's been said a few times, is to allow the two hour uh, time slot to uh, uh, give preference to the Hermosa residents uh, for booking. And I think that's all positive. And then the other piece is uh, we are working family and um, it's uh, to have evening hours or I think it was Gail uh, um, who uh, suggested to um, change the hours at times to allow for uh, um, some evening times, uh, maybe once or twice a week. It helps promote uh, great ladder play. It helps promote good uh, neighbor uh, competitiveness and fun. Uh, and I think that's all good for the community. So I uh, really appreciate the hard work that's been done. Really appreciate the good dialogue tonight. And um, great to see the collaboration between neighbors and players. And, and we're blessed that we're both. And uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Okay. Okay, next, I would like to invite, hold on, give me a second here, sorry, Rob Blair to speak. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Rob Blair, 635 11th Street, um, 30 plus year resident of Hermosa Beach. And I was a participant in the subcommittee and I do have to say, uh, compliments to Mary and Rob. Uh, they were very amenable and definitely were willing to compromise. I also going into this was thinking it was going to put on my gloves, you know, and that that wasn't the way. So I think all in all, very community focused and I like that. Um, uh, my my general comments are that I think locals only is very important. Um, if if we're gonna have an impact on people around that facility, it should be locals, period. Um, I, I don't know, I'm, I wasn't part of the uh, discussion about noise abatement. I'm not sure why that wasn't done. Uh, just like Gail said, if it wasn't noisy, it wouldn't be a problem. Um, so I really think that there should be some consideration if you are going to extend the hours to do something about the noise. Somehow, I, I, I really, I have empathy for all of these players. Uh, I, I, I love to participate in different sports while I don't play pickleball and, and I get it. I understand the fun that comes with that. Um, but when it comes to a choice between people enjoying a sport and a, a severe negative impact to the quality of life of people who have invested to live here, um, I will always choose the quality of life of the resident. Um, and I remember, I can't remember, it was maybe a couple of years ago, there was a, I think there was some sort of a CrossFit um, business in South Hermosa. And it, it, it backed up against a couple of residents' homes, not as many as being, as being impacted with this. And, uh, but it was, it was noisy and it was, it was creating a negative impact. And the city actually eventually shut that business down. So uh, I would ask that you seriously consider the residents and the negative impact um, uh, that it will have on them if you extend the hours too much. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. And Rob, where did you land with the hours? Um, well, I, I was hoping for less, but as you can see, just what Rob and uh, and, um, and Mary said, we all gave a little, and I think that uh, the best compromise is when nobody's really happy. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I would, I would lead on the, on the, the lesser side. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. well, yeah, point well taken. I guess that's um, what no negotiation is all about. <laughs> yep. Okay, well, thank you. You bet, thank you. Okay, next I would like to invite the individual with the phone number ending in 464 to speak. Reminder, if you've dialed in, you do need to hit star six to unmute yourself. And please um, let us know who you are and if you live um, in Hermosa. Okay, 
it looks like they wish not to speak. So I will go ahead and invite the individual with the phone number ending in 210 to speak at this time, if they would like. Hi, this is Amy Irwin, and I've been a resident of Hermosa for more than 30 years and have learned about pickleball in the past four years and have really loved playing. Currently, I have found that to get the hours of play um, available to friends with working late, I've had to play in El Segundo and Manhattan Heights. And to get to El Segundo, it's at least a 20 minute drive for me during the times that we meet one way. So there's 40 minutes of driving. When I was used to riding my bike to the Hermosa Beach courts and I just miss the availability for uh, being able to have routine play and miss being able to ride my bike to play. So I am strongly in favor of increasing the hours. I do understand the impact it has on neighbors with sound and I'm, I'm grateful for the group collaboration of trying to come up with solutions. I'm just voicing my preference to try to maximize the possible amount of hours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Sure. Okay, Lisa, do we have some, anyone else? We do, hold on just a second. Oh, sure. Okay, I'd like to invite the individual with the phone number ending in 151 to speak now if they'd like. Okay. They would not like to speak, so I will go ahead and um, move on to the phone number ending in 328. Okay, so it looks like that we have went through everyone on the list. Okay, okay, very good. Um, one last call, um, is any of the other uh, numbers th that um, didn't pick up earlier? Um, anyone um, else that would like to speak before we close public comment? Okay. Okay, I guess um, then that looks like it'll wrap it up. Yep. Okay, okay, well, we will now close public comment and bring it back um, to the commission for further discussion and debate and um, any questions, um, uh, both further questions of staff and um, it looks like we also have um, some of um, our um, our participants, our um, task group um, participants um, remaining on the line. So if we have any other questions of them um, from what we heard, we um, can probably reach out to them as well. So um, does anyone want to start this off in terms of your thoughts? Okay. Um, I can I can start yes. this off, but I, I was okay. sort of hoping to hear what um, everyone else had to okay. say. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Um, well, um, I I know this may um, be be a crazy thing to even say because I know that, that we've been working on this for so long, and we're at a point where we want to make a decision. But I did do think that um, Gail Rose um, made a good point in that just like we had to be flexible for for COVID, that you know I think we'll we should try to arrive at a mutual um, decision tonight that can move this forward for the community and um, 
you know, um, even though it may not be um, perfectly what everybody wants, I think um, we need to make some progress on this issue. Um, a lot of work's gone into it. But that being said, you know, um, we can also revisit this. Um, and, and I don't know, six months time or whenever, um, maybe um, after August, after um, um, we see what happens in August regarding the other courts and then see how's it working out for everybody. Do we need to, um, you know, toggle with the times a bit from um, what we just, we uh, recommend to the um, city council tonight and then what they ultimately decide to do with this. So, so it is true that we're not, you know, wedded to, to this forever that, um, we can, you know, further see how it goes and, um, you know, make adjustments. But I think some, some great thought has, has gone into this. Um, you know, I, let's see, a couple of, I have so many different little notes that I've written down here and there. Um, so the one hour versus, versus the two hours. Um, I understand why people are saying, um, what pickleball players are saying about two hours, and I, I really do get that. And I guess um, what we need to weigh is um, the opportunity for play among um, very uh, more people um, versus um, so the one hour um, time slots versus the two hour time slots. I don't know how if that complicates a reservation system at all, uh, Lisa, um, but you know, um, I'll throw out as something else to consider. Maybe um, there's also the flexibility of allowing, like some of the places do one hour slots, but um, a resident or a member of the pickleball uh, program can reserve up to two one hour slots. So you have the one hour slots for some people that don't have much time or are, you know, recovering from an injury and they can't play for two hours, but they want to, you know, but they still want to get out there. So they could do the one hour slots and then we could do the two hour slots. The thing about the two hours, if you kind of work it out, you're only allowing for, if we're open for nine hours a day, you're, you're, um, oh, oh, you're allowing four parties basically to sign up plus a one hour kind of um, extra um, as opposed to um, getting more residents, you know, on, on the court. So, uh, so so that's um, something I wanted to throw out there, just um, food for thought. Um, wondering about, you know, the various hour scenarios, would it make more sense to do as one of the late nights, if we do a, a kind of later hours to move that to a Friday night, um, where maybe um, people don't have to get up as early on the Saturday morning, um, you know, as opposed to in the middle of the week. Um, I also heard somebody say that that was one of the more popular days um, and it was harder to get spots on Friday and Saturday. So maybe, you know, adjust the later days to later in the week when it might um, be less maybe impactful for people that are closer by that are trying to, um, you know, get through a work week. Um, and maybe, you know, although I realize people have also have non-traditional work hours, but um, in general, you know, so I was thinking about that. And um, and what else? Uh, in terms of equipment, I understand that, you know, equipment, you know, basically, you know, was something that really everybody seemed to agree, well, let them, you know, let we, the results of our survey really didn't do much. And um, I don't know if, um, I, I don't know what happened there, but I, I think it, we can't really depend on that at all. And in my own kind of quote research, I was um, seeing that um, even though there's been a lot of focus on the paddles, it's really more about the balls. So I would suggest that we really try to, you know, follow developments there. Um, in terms of better pickleball balls. And um, I know people are working on, this is not a unique problem to our city. And um, I know that the um, Pickleball Association knows that there are these issues. And um, 
I don't know what the process is for um, for approving, um, for, you know, approved equipment or whatever that they, they um, you know, what their certification process is. But um, I think we should follow any developments there. And if there turns out to be equipment that's better down the line, we should certainly review that again and see if we can make any sort of a switch to, you know, um, asking for certain, you know, quieter equipment if um, at that point um, there are more options out there for people. Um, so for now, those are some of my thoughts and um chairwoman yes i, I, I have i'd like to kind of give you a, a little support on some of your inquiries if it, it might help some of the other commissioners oh perfect uh, you, your one of your com your first comment was about the two-hour concept um the proposed policy modification would be for two hours maximum so the flexibility is there and and allowed for an individual who might just want to reserve one hour Okay. So it's just up to two hours. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Got so it. That, that gives you, that might help you with, with that general uh, concept. And regarding the equipment, um, so there was a lot of discussion on the equipment topic in the uh, uh, focus group because, you know, there's um, a, a lot of interest in folks recreationally that are playing pickleball, but also competitively. Mm -hmm. And sometimes recreationally will turn into competitive players uh, as referenced by uh, the one young gentleman or, or Mr. Uh, was, he was Nathan, uh, 17 right. years old, quite impressed. Yeah. He's out there playing pickleball and, and doing uh, competing to get some of these uh, Wiley veterans. But, you know, the fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, I, I think that the quality of the equipment, it's got to be sanctioned through the association that does the certification. And you're right, there's a lot of uh, interest out there on looking at quieter equipment. Uh, you're right, paddles uh, are, are, are probably something that's been looked at the most, but there's studies being done on the balls right now. So we can certainly keep our ears to the, to the, to the ground on this one. And but I still think you should lean towards the uh, USAPA sanctioned uh, equipment for the benefit of, uh, for all, all players. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, with regards to the later times, I know that the commission, you know, I think that's a great idea. I think the commission might want to start to figure out or lean yourself towards which concept or our usage is where you're leaning towards, because that will help you then define how the later times play and how you'd like to do that. So mm -hmm. that's all mm -hmm. I have at this point. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No, that's very helpful. And um, I guess I'm also looking at this maybe as um, incrementally, you know, uh, making progress, um, you know, making progress on some of these things um, and, you know, looking at the hours um, in that way as well, because I think everybody, um, has um, has done some compromising here. Um, so um, thank you for that. Um, yes, uh, Commissioner Horowitz, thank you. <laughs> um, I think there's been a lot of really good comments tonight and it's really nice to hear how well um, the focus group and the subcommittee and our staff work together to create some of these compromises. Um, you touched on some of my concerns, which was the, the reservation system and being able to be flexible with the hours. Um, I'm, I'm curious about why they can't do same day reservations. I know that was something that we read in some of the electronic comments. And I think um, in this scenario, um, is there still someone monitoring the court? Is someone still? So let me, let me help you with that. Um, as you well are, as you you're aware, the tennis courts do not any longer have a, a monitor because right. of COVID restrictions. They've let they've, they've minimized and we're able to remove the monitor. Uh, ultimately, we see that there might be the need for a monitor initially in whatever agreed upon uh, compromise the commission and the council approve, but the goal would be to remove the monitor. So, and Lisa, you can help me with this with this issue. But 
The reason we don't do same day reservations is because we still have to print the reservation sheets and have them placed on the courts mm -hmm. so that people can see who has what and when. And we don't have the resources to be able to turn it around. To run down there. Yeah, so yeah. we yeah. needed a day to, to be able to get it out that for that next day. For the people who have the memberships, is is it possible for them to log in the same day though and see what reservations are yes. are already slotted out and then yes. they can, because that's when open play is available is when there's no oh. reservation taken. Yeah, so that's, the, and that's that. the beauty. And that's actually the beauty of it because it really leans towards locals only our Hermosa residents taking full advantage of those courts because they are member, they can see online uh, those that are not members, who, and you must be a Hermosa resident to be a member, right. those that aren't members don't know. And it's like a, a, a gamble, you right. know, they can- So they can see that live time, what, exactly. what's been reserved and what is still open. Correct. So they can basically show up for yeah. open play. Correct. And um, Ms. Gail Rose took, took the idea from my notes where I was thinking <laughs> maybe we could move one of the, the days so there is a little a little more flexibility for um, those who work and, and shift the hours instead of maybe nine to six, go noon, noon to nine and to see nine. how that works. Yeah, I would err on the side for me of um, the fewer hours because at some point I'm imagining that the other two courts will open and that will only increase the noise level. So I would say be more conservative and you can always add in if it's working out versus taking away again. Um, so that's sort of where where I fall. Um, I did I liked the idea a lot of the um, offering the beginning classes, and I think it was Mary who volunteered to teach it. And my only concern with that is making that making sure that that would be a more regular slotted time. Um, and because otherwise, the reservation system will just take that over, um, and they won't allow that to to exist because everybody will want to play, which I understand. But I really liked that idea for people to be able to come in and learn the game. And maybe that's the opportunity to introduce the different equipment, the foam balls for the beginners, rather than um, the more tournament ready equipment, because when you're learning, you don't want to go play in a tournament right away. <laughs> At least I wouldn't. Um, but I would like to see that beginner class be a more um, regular occurrence if, if that's the way we go and have that be, you know, biweekly or, you know, once a month and give it, give it a time so that people can, can get used to that and know that there's a place for them to go. And we, we can do that because we clearly can book outside the time period from anybody else. So we would block out that time and promote it uh, in advance, of course. Uh, we'd like to at least give a two weeks notice for people because what happens a lot of times is people get used to playing, let's pretend on Saturdays and that's their play. So you got to at least let folks know in advance right. of that second Saturday that we're going to have lessons during that time. Exactly. Uh, and you block yeah. it out so people yeah. know so, that they can't play then, but beginners know that they can play right. and they can just show up. And um, we would, yeah, we would coordinate that with, and I know, I think Lisa, we also have an individual in that it offers pickleball classes for the Correct. city that yeah. may be also supportive. I know, I think Mary knows, is that Anne? Am I? Annie Lewis. I Annie Lewis. Okay. So I know that uh, Mary also knows that. And so I'm just saying it's, yeah, I think it's a great Doable. opportunity that help can help folks that are a little intimidated with the play to learn and get used to get up to speed. But mm -hmm. I, I appreciate all the comments and the feedback and, and hoping that we can, you know, find a good work along with you guys, you know, the focus group and the subcommittee and the staff to find the compromise to move forward and sort of make as many people happy in the compromise that we can. Right, right. That's it for me for now. <laughs> oh, well, excellent points. Thank you very much. I was taking notes as well. Uh, okay, um, Commissioner Lang. You muted. <laughs> there you go. Very, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody who's been involved in this process. I would also like to um, just let everybody know that uh, I've been a commissioner 
uh, for eight years. And the pickleball conversation was one of the first issues that came across um, my desk to deal with. And uh, I see a lot of um, uh, a few old faces who were there from the early days and a lot of new ones. So I really wanted to let all the new faces and uh, involved parties know my involvement. And um, I'll say it right now, I was one of the first commissioners to say, hey, let's stop kicking the can down the street and let's just make a decision. And that decision was to move forward with permanent fixed pickleball courts. Um, I was personally very proud of the direction that the city went in. We did our due diligence. We listened to the neighbors. We listened to the tennis players. We walked the neighborhoods of uh, other cities that had pickleball courts. And the best feeling in the world was seeing the positive results that these players had, that they were experiencing. Everything from enhanced athleticism to making new friends, obviously to economic benefits to the to the neighboring restaurants, all of which was amazing and put a smile on everybody's face who was involved. Um, but since then, uh, we've really established the tolerance threshold of our neighbors, particularly the neighbors surrounding the park when it comes to the noise that came from pickleball. Eight years we've been talking about this, give or take. And it um, it's it hasn't come for lack of compromise. And all parties involved compromise. And oh my gosh, staff, you have done so much when it comes to researching noise mitigation, talking to the community, everything um, has been, as far as I'm concerned, a pleasure to watch happen and to evolve. Uh, these options are great, although I feel you know that um, they can be improved. Um, I will start with a couple of thoughts and warn. I want to warn everybody. I've got eight years of thought into this, so I will go for a little bit. Um, I will say the genesis of my thought in regards to supporting pickleball came from Promosa Beach's history of um, alternative sports, whether it was surfing, skateboarding, volleyball, et cetera. Um, small town, one mile square, 20,000 residents. We've done nothing but compromise. This commission has compromised several times, whether it's been the conversation of adding volleyball courts, whether it's been the conversation of adding um, anything else along the way. I just use volleyball as, as a recent example because I feel that there are parallels. Um, a lot of strange things have happened because of the pandemic. Um, I'm a surfer. I can tell you that people move to Hermosa Beach because they want to be surfers. And we have had, we have seen over 2 million surfers enter the water in the last 12 months. Man, you want to talk about compromise? When you're dealing with a natural element that occurs randomly, like a wave, you just got to deal with it. And as surfers, we jump on our bikes, we jump on our cars, and we have to travel. And I see that many avid pickleball players have found a compromise and have moved to other courts when they needed to pursue their passions. And I always say one of the hardest things about being a Parks and Rec Commissioner is that we talk about our community's passions, why people live in Hermosa Beach. Uh, whether it's volleyball, pickleball, uh, little league, basketball, sur surfing, skateboarding, whatever, that we as commissioners take that very seriously. So thank you for entrusting us with that. And one thing that continues to boil down is compromise. And I feel like we have outlined several, several great compromises here. Um, I would like to um, commend the proposed policies and usage of modifications. I love all of that. I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, I will use the parallel of the skate park and the success that we've we've seen in creating a membership there, as well as reducing the amount of um, people using it uh, and making sure that the appropriate equipment is used. And I see that I feel that the pickleball courts um, are are going in that direction. There's no if it's not broken, don't need to fix it. We can look at the skate park. And for those who don't remember, about 20 years ago, skateboarding was considered a crime in Hermosa Beach. And now it's it's a fundraiser for school. So we have come a long way as a community as far as compromising our activities. Um, but I will say that the, 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 the flaw in the skate park structure is that one hour is not enough. So I sympathize with the pickleball players because you just start getting warmed up. And at the end of the day, if you want to come go from a beginner pickleball player or skateboarder to an intermediary to a competition level, any athlete to one hour is not enough. So I will 
definitely agree with all the players that, yeah, they need at least a two hour option somewhere in there. Um, that is just, it, that's just athletics 101. You just need time to get better, warm up, not get hurt, cool down, et cetera. Um, we have to think about what makes sense and quality of play, quality of experience makes sense for the players. Um, furthermore, I feel like we can agree that there are two types of players. We have um, the retired player, and then we have the working player. Obviously, there's some youth components to it, but I, let me just, in my opinion, in my notes, that's where I've identified. Um, I feel that the retired player has the ability to be a little bit more flexible as far as the hours go. Um, so I think we can do some adjustments. Uh, the working player, I feel you guys, we are putting, in some cases, we're putting in longer hours now working from home because we can't get away from our laptop and we need to decompress. And I do believe it was um, uh, one of the earlier folks who spoke who mentioned, hey, daylight is an issue. If your activity is volleyball and in the fall and the winter, when the daylight goes away, you need that release. So I feel that there is a parallel there to consider in the evening play, whether your other activities are restricted because of uh, daytime or um, daylight or whether you got long hours. So my problem with um, option one is that there's only one opportunity for extended evening play. Um, uh, hold on one sec. Like fellow commissioners, we have notes all over the place so bear with me. Um, you know, nothing is easy in Hermosa Beach. I really wish we could have had this meeting in person. Um, so thank you to everybody who called in. Thank you to everybody who reached out and emailed everyone. Um, Gail, I really like what you said in regards to, you know, breaking things up, having uh, a modification to the midday play. Um, you know, we can ha have... Uh, you know, start the gameplay for the nighttime, for the working folks, give it a Wednesday from four to nine or something to get that capacity. But keep in mind, you guys, we have gone from 84 hours to the current pandemic hours of 28. In every single one of these scenarios, we're adding 17 hours for option one, 20 hours for option two, 23 hours for option three. That's a lot of hours for something that disrupts your quality of life for those extended hours, guaranteed. The players are playing 17 hours, 20 hours, 23 hours. The residents are living those hours. So, you know, in conclusion, you know, the, the residents were here first. The residents have they have told us what the tolerance threshold is for this activity. Um, extended hours are just going to introduce, uh, uh, shoot, you know, I, um, quality of life, I guess, is really what it boils down to for me. As somebody who advocated the installation of these courts, I was proud when the quality of life for these players got better. And when the quality of life declined for the residents there, that broke my heart, um, particularly the fact that we don't even know if renters were notified because of this. Um, it is a compromise. That doesn't matter. We're all going to have to compromise. We've gotten here this far, but I would, I, I, I think all of these options are flawed. I think that we've set, we've set a trajectory in the right course. I think we, we continue to reduce the playable hours. We maximize some opportunity for evening play for the working players and I would like to hear what the rest of our commissioners say because I am, I'm still open-minded to coming to some sort of conclusion. And I firmly agree we cannot continue kicking this down the, down the street. That's what I said several years ago and I'll stand by it. So I hope we come to some sort of conclusion this evening to enhance the quality of life for pickleball players as well as residents. Thank you. Thank you for that, Commissioner Lang. Very well said. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Elman. Um, like I said earlier, I, I knew that I would hear some wonderful ideas from everybody. And um, so it, there are a few things that need to be said. And one is that um, nobody gave Gail and uh, 
uh, any of these um, residents the power to make the decision. What we asked them to do was to come together and, and talk and, and see what we could do with a program. What happened, and I think it's really important to get this out. What happened was on the last, the last meeting, uh, Jessica and I were put on the spot of, of being told that we were expected to agree to what this group um, had talked about. And we didn't feel we could do that because one, we hadn't talked to you. And two, we both did not feel that that was the goal of the group was to come up with some finite ideas, like some finite agreements is the word, not, not ideas, but agreements. And that's where we got stuck. So um, I, I just think it's really important that we understand that, that these were, in, as far as I was concerned, these were ideas. So, um, and I'm also, uh, Yanni, thank you for bringing it up and, and uh, Lauren, I did talk to John about the noticing and I, I do feel that we've, we've made a mistake by again, not, knowing for sure that those most impacted know what's going on tonight. And that's because one of the, um, the buildings that's closest to the courts, the renter moved away specifically because of this issue. We have, I've been told, I, in fact, I introduced myself to the homeowner, uh, I'm sorry, the renter and said, hey, we're going to be having a meeting in uh, May to discuss this. And, you know, I gave them my card and I said, you know, please, you know, follow what's going on. And then I found out that there is a good chance or any kind of a chance that they might not know about this meeting because our, um, the announcements went out to the landowner, not who lives at that address. So I, I think we've made a mistake there. Um, also, I think it's really important to remember, and I think Yanni brought this up, that we've been living in the world of COVID where people, the, the hours are short, and now we're saying, oh, we're going to extend the hours. It doesn't matter what we agree to tonight, whether it's 30 hours, 45 hours, 51 hours, whatever, that people have forgotten that the weather's gonna change, windows are gonna be open, and this is a whole new game. So I would like us to go to be somewhat conservative in the changes that we make, uh, if we make changes. Um, like I said earlier, I've talked to many different cities and all of them, first of all, every single time I would call and introduce myself and explain what I was calling about, there would be a heavy sigh. Um, we're not special, we're not different. I don't know any city that is dealing with pickleball that doesn't find this to be a frustration. So I, I, I think it's important that we acknowledge that, which I think Yanni did a great job of, of doing that. Um, so, but what they all had in common, every single one of them, nobody got rid of pickleball. What they did was they made major changes. They um, found a way to pay to wrap their courts or in Walla Walla, Washington. I have, I have a, a wall in front of me of stickums and I can tell you post-its and I'm looking at all of them. And I can tell you over here that Andy and at Walla Walla said that the pickleball crowd got together and raised $150,000 and they moved their courts. Well, wouldn't that be lovely, but we don't have a place to move them to. So, um, the village of Ridge, Ridgewood, they dealt exactly what you've been talking about. They changed their hours. They made them rather unusual where there's there's no play during the middle of the day. Um, those happen to be the hottest hours. Uh, so in New Jersey, that makes a difference. Um, so although I personally do not feel that pickleball works in Hermosa Beach, I don't. I think we made a mistake by letting this fester for as long as we have. This should have been dealt with a long time ago. And us being us, we always try to figure out how to make it work. 
and I am worried about going to a you know full throttle of 51 hours or any major increase. So I, I I'm more than willing to talk about these hours. Um, I thought Tracy brought up a great point of um, well, like everybody, I'm not sure who came up with which idea, but of and what Gail said of maybe closing the courts during some period of time during the day, if we're going to have the courts open till nine, I do agree that we should have the courts open um, at night, at least two nights a week, because I do think that we have um, a, some people that deserve, if, if we're going to do this, then we need to be fair about it. Um, I do totally agree with, um, I can do this because I've got all these names written down here like everybody else with uh, Brian Zerbel that um, we should really consi consider what we can do to quiet these courts. And I know that we have a, um, a parks master plan coming up. I know that we're going to be tight with our budget, but I do believe that the residents that live in this area deserve more than what we're what we're going to probably offer them tonight. And um, boy, that comment just went right out of my head. Um, I would like them, I would like them to be rewarded for their patience. Uh, not that the pickleball players don't need to be rewarded for their patience also. I know that this has been a, been a, a big frustration. I've uh, talked to many of them and, and I've, I've heard their frustration, but I do believe that We've proven that the problem we're having is strictly pickleball. We do not have anybody that's complained about the basketball, about the batting cages, about any of the other sports that happen at Clark Field. It is only pickleball. So I would like to see us make a concerted effort to one, um, be sure that we appreciate the fact that it is summer and that windows will be open and that people are gonna go from uh, 28 hours to an increase of something and that they will be surprised. Because again, nobody in this area, none of the residents voted anybody to be their representative. And I think it's important that we realize that maybe, maybe this new program that we're gonna come up with tonight, possibly come up with tonight, um, is good for 90 days. And then by then, um, I believe we'll be close. I think we'll be close to the end of summer. I, I don't have a lot of faith in two courts versus four courts coming down the road anytime soon. It would be nice to, but I, we're, we're basing a lot of this on two courts. And when it opens to four, like everybody said, it's a whole different ball game. So, and lastly, because I did get, um, um, a, a comment from a resident that we all know it's all about the ball. So if we were to change to that softer ball, we wouldn't be here tonight. And I realized that that is a, a tough ask. So um, I, 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 again, I appreciate everybody's comments, especially my fellow commissioners. And I'm curious to see where we think we can go with these hours to be creative and respectful uh, I am concerned about the one hour versus two hours. Two hours is a lot to ask. Um, again, because we only have two courts. So I, I'm not sure how to do that. Do we have a, a two hour time slot on certain days? Uh, it gets a little hard to follow if we're, we're doing every day is something different. So um, because like I, I, I believe Tracy and uh, Lauren had originally come up with, my, my thoughts were that if we were going to st open, stay open until nine, maybe we wouldn't open the courts until noon. But someone came up with the idea of closing the courts possibly during the middle of the day. Uh, maybe on those days, the courts are closed from, you know, three to six, two to five. I'm, so that's where I am with this. I'll, I'll leave it for someone else's uh, time to open it up to some creative time management. Thank you. Chair, Chairwoman? Yes, uh, yes. If I could, if I could share, um, certainly 
you have the full uh, deciding point as to how you'd like to do this. I'm going to give you a caution uh, mm -hmm. in that if you are going to consider uh, breaking times like morning time and a downtime and then an afternoon time, that is going to uh, create more staff resources mm -hmm. because we have to then go close the courts. Uh, we have to touch the courts four times instead mm -hmm. of just twice. That's a good point. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I caution you on that area. Uh, I know we're trying to find, I, I, if you're going to be adjusting hours, which I think is a totally appropriate, I'd pick a start time and an end time and everything in the middle is is playable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I know, I've point. been playing with, playing with some things. And if, if we do um, go the flexibility of um, up to two hours, then maybe we look at uh, multiples of two, you know, if we want to like shave an hour off or if we want to, um, you know, move and adjust some of the hours. Um, I mean, maybe we start on um, a late day at, you know, and have play from, from noon to eight or something like that. Um, I think 12 hours in a day is a lot for residents, but there's ways that we can kind of tog toggle around these other hours. Well, if we were to, if, let's just, I, I, so I have the, I just, I have the hours in front of us. I have page, mm -hmm. page three in front of me. Okay. If we stayed closed on Sundays and Mondays uh -huh. and on um, Tuesdays, if just because it's in front of us. So we have um, Tuesdays until 9 p.m. If we just, again, just talking, um, if we did Tuesdays noon to nine, Wednesdays um, nine to five, if every, if, if the, if we stayed open two days a week until nine and we closed the courts at five, that takes us 12 to nine is nine hours. Nine to five is eight hours. Twelve to nine is nine hours. Friday, if we were if we did nine to five, that's eight hours. And Saturday, if we did nine to five, that's eight hours. If you add that all together, please do elementary school math. <laughs> I'm at forty two hours. Mr. Does anybody want to check my math? No. So 40, well, 41 so, hours, 41 hours, four eights and a nine. Is that what I'm hearing? Three, three eights and two nines. So 42 hours. Okay. So let, let me rewind a little bit and put a thought into this as well. Uh -huh. Barb, Barb, thank you for doing that. Um, it seems like at the beginning of this whole pickleball experience, there was a, there were issues. If I read the staff report correctly, and I'm just referencing the staff report because this wasn't, I never heard anything otherwise within our meetings or in the staff report, bullying and things of that nature by the more elite level players. So let's, let's, let's just decide that, you know, we aren't an elite level training facility for mm -hmm. competition, but right. we can still offer those opportunities in the way of the two hour block. Okay. So you know, whether it's a black diamond at Mammoth or whether it's a green circle, you know, you're going to pick your skill set and you're going to focus on that, right? So these elite level players, where I want to get better as a surfer, I'm going to Hawaii, right? Hermosa yeah. Beach cannot offer that caliber of wave to become better, right? Okay, so let's look at these courts like that, whether it's Mammoth or whether it's a wave, we are not building a high level competition facility. That was never the, the intent. But as things develop, people are going to get better. So I think to, to answer the question of bullying and some of these other problems or too intense play, whatever the case may be, um, we limit the number of two-hour play because it sounds like that's relegated to the advanced players. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that a safe assumption? And, and if somebody in the audience says otherwise, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to come to a compromise and recognize all the skill levels here. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think um, that is a... A fair point that we can never really be that elite site. Um, just, um, you know, we weren't set up for that. So uh, just like I'm, I'm we're just never going to get the Hawaii waves here. I'm just, right? I'm, so 
Yanni, are you saying that maybe there would be certain days a week that we would only allow two hours of play? And Is yeah, that correct. Okay. And those and, are and, and those are relegated to advanced players. They've got the time. They've got the passion. They're trying to improve their gameplay for whatever reason, whether it's just for themselves or to actually compete. They're going to make time for those adjustments. I feel it's safe to say that they're already currently doing that by going to a number of other cities. I mean, that was clearly volunteered from Santa Monica, Manhattan Beach, Torrance, Venice, Inglewood, Culver City. So this community has already exhibited their thirst for the game, their ability to travel. Yes, convenience is an issue, but once again, we're talking about compromise, not convenience here. So I think two-hour play is important. We want that. We want people to have that opportunity, but it's not the priority because I feel that the priority is the quality of life for our residents. Okay, but I still need you to be a little bit more black and white with me. Okay. Um, so are are we are, are, are you saying that right now, because we only have two courts, that maybe we would only do one hour of play? Or are we still talking about having Tuesdays and Thursdays be two-hour play day and the Correct. other days be single-hour days? Correct. Single, okay. Yeah, that, I'm talking about the two-hour block, the performance block. But we will have, in, in your world, we would have two-hour blocks now with only having two courts. Without a Venn diagram in front of me, it, it's hard It's hard to come to that conclusion. But no, I, I'm not even, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be, you know, silly about no, it. But no, I, I really need to, like, yeah. draw it out. And I think right now we are at a spitballing phase. Right. Well, like, we also heard somebody say that they, they pair up with their partners and make back-to-back -back reservations so they can play. So I, I like what you're saying, but I don't know that that will change the grouping of people. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's a lot harder to, to um, I think it's probably a lot harder to try to make that pairing work. I, um, but, you I know. Wanted, oh, sorry. Oh, go uh, ahead. I, I wanted to add, because what I'm understanding is some days you would have one hour maximum play or one hour a lot, one hour maximum reservation play allowed. And other days you would have two hours maximum reservation play allowed, but that's not, I wouldn't be able to do that in our res online reservation system. It's not to where I can set the maximum hours per day. It's just the maximum hours allowed for reservation. Like it's right. not per day like that, unfortunately. You don't have that kind of flexibility. I don't. Okay. There's not that much. You should work on that, Lisa. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've got lots of suggestions for improvement. Yeah. So, so then maybe you should tell us how we could make this work. Because, I mean, we are coming up with all these great ideas, but. Well, we did. The, Two hour You're maximum. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I just I can't set one hour maximum on some days and, and two hour maximum on other days. It has to be for the reservation system in general. It's just, you know, a spot where I can enter the maximum. So could we be the one hour play city? Or could we only be a two hour play city? I'm, I'm asking oh, you well, how the system Well, works. right now we're a one hour play city, but okay. based on um, our work with the pickleball stakeholders, the group, we uh -huh. are recommending being a two hour play city because we've heard that one hour is not enough time. Yeah, and but um, but John was saying that there's a flexibility in the system. So if somebody just wanted to book an hour, they could. They That's could. Correct. It would it would be two hours maximum. So you could do one or two hours. It doesn't but make we can't easy. but you can't say this is this is Tuesday and Tuesday right. we only book one hour. Right. Well, it isn't Lisa, it's the system. Well, no, 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 no. Right. <laughs> yes, we know. We know. She is the system. She's I know. Lisa. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, maybe we're just getting a little bit too much in the, into the weeds right now. Maybe you want to start to focus on where you think the amount of hours you might want to look at and then start to go off that. Yeah, yeah, I think working backwards is the best approach to this. And then we so you want to go with a, a maximum hour? I, I think that's a great way to start. Okay, so let's take the pieces. So, so how do we feel about one versus two hours? Well, I mean, it did seem that overall, you know, whether they were, you know, pickleball players were 
uh, you know, striving towards tournaments or they just want to get together and hang out with friends. Um, there were two hours seemed to be where everyone was at. And again, I'll just say we only have two courts. Yeah, so two I know. Hours. That's if the we, other. Put, that, I mean, because if we, if, if we, if we go with, let's just say that we go with three days a week at eight hours, that's not a lot of court time. It's four parties, basically. Yeah. How so many members here. do we have right now? I have that information, actually. Hold on just a second here. I'm going to pull that up. Okay, so we are at 135 members. 135 members. How many mailers went out to neighbors surrounding the park? I think 400, 400 was thrown out. 498. 498 potentially impacted residents and 135 enthusiastic pickleball players who have struggled with the COVID reduced hours and have gone out of their way to become members and whatever else comes along with that, correct? Does that sound right? So that's a metrics that we got to work with. Barb, you said something black and white. There's a black and white figure that we've got right now. I like to it. Consider. Well, um, well, then if we, if, if we, let's just pretend we went with my idea of 12 to nine, that's nine hours. That wouldn't work then. You need an even number. No. We don't have to. You can reserve up to two hours. So, so you if, if, you find, if you find that four groups book two hours, there's only an hour left. Okay. Right. Um, well, so can we can we talk about can we we talk about the idea of 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 doing something like again because we're we're I, I'm looking at can we agree that we're looking at a ninety day program because hmm. we're going to come back and revisit this after um, after summer and also maybe. Be, between maybe we'll have a lawsuit that's been settled and we will have four courts. But I, I hate the fact that we're going to come up with some idea and then we're going to have a major change like, oh, all of a sudden we have four courts and we've given the residents, we've gone from uh, 28 hours to 42 or you know 51. So can we, can we agree? That we would whatever we come up with tonight, it's for 90 days. Why well, don't I'm not feeling the love here? Yeah. Well, no. well. Did you want to say something? I like the idea of 90 days, particularly that it takes us through the hot season. Cause I think an element that, you know, Barb, thank you for reminding us. It gets hot. Not everybody has AC, windows are open. Everybody likes the ocean breeze. Let's go back to why we live in Hermosa Beach, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe that that has come up over the years is it gets hot during the summer. People want their windows open. And I believe some neighbors in the past have gone as far as installing AC and trying to get noise reduced, re reducing um, windows and not all of it has worked. So let's factor that in. So if we want to run a 90 day program, we will sort of know, well, exactly know what the residents what their opinion is going to be during the time of year when it's hottest and they're most prone to noise coming into the house because the windows are open, right? We'll also have the, we have basketballs playing, we'll have some more ambient noise, mm -hmm. which helps some. Yeah. So, um, okay, so we can check, can we check that off of our list right now that we're going to do a 90-day program? Pilot program? What are we going to Let's call it? The matter? Okay. Pilot, bring it back um, to um, with a um, report and see how we're doing in 90 days. I know, John, you won't be in a 90 day then. trial period. It, it mm -hmm. doesn't, yeah. doesn't, you don't need me. <laughs> so, I, well, I know you're, you're taking notes. I mean, yeah. we, so, but a 90 day program would, would at least give us an idea of how we're doing. I would call um, it a 90 day then, pilot program if that's what you're Okay. So, we'll call it a pilot program. And then, um what how I know we we've we've had these suggestions of all these hours. Um we're all a, a little gun shy about the, the, the large increase uh, to the neighbors. 
So can we, can we? The, the, um, what we were discussing earlier. Um, yeah. So would that be the Tuesday and Thursday 12, it would be 12 to nine. And then the nine to six days would be nine to five is what you were saying, Barbara? That's where I am right now. Yes. Yeah. So the the pickleball community that. came out, the stakeholders and their group said, we are content with it's stopping at six o'clock and we don't need to play any longer than nine o'clock. John? Yeah, so the conversation in that went that direction. They could go as early as five o'clock, uh, but they did know they were trying to give support to those individuals who wanted nighttime play. And so they really felt nine o'clock was best if you're gonna do a nighttime play, you need to give them at least after work, six o'clock to nine o'clock to get their time in. Okay. Right, right. Of course, the ambient noise will be probably less at that time, but. but Remember the, pick, uh, the tennis courts are open until 10. Oh, true. Okay. I was at Little League till 10 o'clock last night. Okay. Yeah, it, that park is not necessarily quiet <laughs> at a certain time. It's pretty busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lisa, do yeah. we allow um, uh, the basketball courts? Can we play basketball until nine or 10? Yeah, yeah. the hours are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day. Nine, yeah. Okay, so, so then okay. if we did nine, then we're then that means you, you would close good. that complex at nine o'clock. You would close the tennis court also at nine. Oh, okay. that so okay. that's good for staff as well. I think well, simpler, less right. resources. Simpler. Yeah, no, it's um, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I like that schedule to um, test it out. Okay. Um, does, it make, does it make more sense to make that second 9 p.m. night a Friday night? Or you guys like that Thursday night? Yeah, okay. That now that, okay. What's that? Um, I was thinking that too, Friday okay. night. Okay, well, that's what I was thinking. That's yeah. what I was suggesting as well. Yeah. John, was there I just a wanted to add, Yeah, I wanted to add insight onto why it was Tuesday and Thursday. Um, I'm sure you guys may remember we had a group of dads that had met to that would meet up to play Tuesdays and Thursdays um, that had spoke previously at mm -hmm. our meetings about, you know, wanting to be able to continue that. So we were trying to um, respond to that, their, their time coming to the commission meetings and expressing their desire to keep that going and to get that to return. But I don't recall if they what day they preferred i felt that that, uh, th that those guys were so passionate they would just take whatever they could get well uh, this was back when the courts were open 9 a.m to 9 p.m every day uh-huh so they i oh. knew that they had met on tuesdays and thursdays and they wanted it to be extended to 10. Good, um, that's right that's yeah. right yeah yeah well but so i'm not sure you know i we haven't heard from them tonight so i'm not sure you know if yeah, they still intend to meet and play, but that was just um, a courtesy to that. Well, we have, um, as you said, 135 members and uh, almost 500 nearby residents. So I think we should base it more on, as much as I love this idea of these dads getting together, also on whether a Friday makes more sense for that to be the late night day. So do you wanna break it up and do Tuesday and Friday? I don't, I, doing it two nights in a row might not be fair yeah. to the neighbors. Yeah. So. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, Tuesday or Thursday or Tuesday or Friday. I was just thinking that if uh, people in the neighborhood are, um, you know, if they're working, maybe Friday is um, less intrusive than a Thursday. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't that, know. That would be my thought on that. And if two nights are being offered, that's a win for the evening yeah. dads it sure beats option one where there's only one night right um, sure. and i want to be mindful of those guys because hey you know what they all work hard and they deserve to get out there and play and they're they're doing something unique and um their 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 days are challenging they only have a few hours so we want to figure out how to utilize that space for everybody's quality of play mm -hmm. um right yeah well we're actually from option two we'd be adding another late night Mm -hmm. But reducing hours. Right. But reducing hours, yeah. right. Maybe starting at one o'clock and, and you know, there's so much going on on Fridays anyway with the 
farmer's market. market. I thought maybe one to nine on Friday might be kind of ideal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to throw a wrench in, but I'm going to speak a little bit about what the committee did say. There was mm -hmm. uh, there was some discussion about morning hours, afternoon hours, evening hours. Uh, you heard tonight from many of the folks who spoke that evening hours are important because they work. Uh, you didn't hear so much from the retired folks who prefer playing in the morning. So mm -hmm. as you do start to make these moves, you got to be cognizant of the fact that morning hours are probably more highly uh, in, interesting hours for those that are retired that want to get their exercise out of the way and then go enjoy the day. So I, I don't want to feel, I, I don't want you to think that, you know, it, it's not important. Uh, I'm trying to reflect what the committee said as a whole. And they did say morning hours were, were good for them too. Uh, a couple of things to come into play when you do morning hours, um, and it, 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 people, were, we know we're going back to the term, to, to normalcy. People will start to go back to work. There's been a huge impact over this last year with people now working from home. So there's a lot more noise impacts too. But uh, so I do want you to, you know, I'm not, I know you were close to ice and a deal, but I want you to keep in mind that morning hours are a prime hour for the players also. No, no, John, I would imagine a component to preferred morning hours is because it's cooler too, right? Midday. Well, in the summertime, top, I mean, right? you're, you're almost developing a seasonal schedule. Uh, <laughs> and, and so I don't know, I mean, that certainly could go down that path. Uh, I, I'm certain that in the more uh, unfriendly hot areas like La Quinta's and Palm Deserts, uh, you know, you won't see a lot of play during the summertime, during the daytime. <laughs> it's just too hot. Yeah, I don't no, know I asked how it. hot your temperature gets in Hermosa during the day. You're near a coastal breeze. So I, I, you know, it's hard to tell the intensity you would have. But I would say a lot of the uh, retired folks are early risers, and mm -hmm. they like to get out. You're going to find tennis to be the same. They just like to get their exercise out of the way and be done. Okay. Well, wait, let's see. Three out of... The five that we're looking at are nine nine a.m. I I just wanted to I didn't want to leave that discussion out. Yeah. Uh, in the big picture of things, however you choose it, you choose it. I, I'm okay. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No. I. No. We. Um, it's all helpful. So you were discussing whether to land. The evening hours on Tuesday and Thursday or Tuesday and Friday. Farmer's market takes place at what time? One to four. One to four. We have to consider parking and ease of accessibility. It would that prevent people from choosing <laughs> Friday as an option because it is, you know, occupied by vendors and farmer market goers? No. Good point. It's a good point. Yeah. Well, we do um once you know, again, I, to be mindful of the quality yeah. of play and access for the pickleball players. Right, right. Well, I, again, we're we're looking at a ninety-day program here, so um, and we can come back and revisit the nine o'clock night versus what we're looking at now. But I think John brought up a good point sure. about um, uh, the farmers' market and. Yanni, your point about parking, we all know it's pretty difficult. And um, so uh, I'm easy. I can go either way on that. Currently, the hours there during COVID is 9 to 6 on Fridays. That's right. 10 to 6. Yeah. 10 to 6. That's what I was just going to say. So, so it's so, overlapping. And that's one of our market. most popular reservation days is Friday yeah. and Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're, and they fill up and there's overlap now. So they're finding a way. Well, so. and once again, without just being, just using the information provided this evening, it sounded like most of the folks that called in said they walked or rode their bike. To mm -hmm. the, yeah, to the true. I can just reiterate what was told to us by well, the pickleball enthusiasts, right? Lisa, Lisa, you made an interesting point. You can look at the current reservations, and I know that doesn't represent all pickleball players because there are many, many commenters tonight said they've not played at Hermosa since COVID. So I, mm -hmm. I get that. 
But did you just say Friday and Saturday is the most popular time frame? Yeah, I mean we're pretty booked up with reservations. And, and that might be only because that might be only because of the limited hours. I mean we're extremely yeah, limited. Yeah. We're only open from nine to one mm -hmm. on the other days. So. Um, and then the other days, the most popular times are the morning hours. Okay. We don't have as many in the in the you know eleven to one bracket. I would. If I were y'all, I mean, your choice, I'd leave it at the Thursday and see how it plays over the 90 days to see what you want to do. I'm okay with that. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because currently we don't have any nine o'clock hours, so. No. Okay. So right now, right now we don't. Right. The latest we have currently is 6 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. That's COVID hours. Okay. So pre-COVID hours went from 9 to 9. Mm -hmm. Right. But I've been keeping a document here on everything, on all the hours that you guys have discussed. So I can share my screen just to make sure that um, we're all on the same page on where we're landing as of right now. So, or whenever you guys need me to share it, I can do so. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, why don't we take a look at it? Oh, sorry. Hold on just a second. Okay, there we go. Do you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this correct as I have it now? Oh. That's that's what I have written yeah. down also. Okay. Yeah. I can yeah, try to zoom here. Oh, Tracy, do you need oh, glasses? To read. <laughs> Tracy, do you need glasses? I have them. I just don't wear them. I can read that just fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have mine too. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm being vain tonight. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's I think um, what we were discussing. And um, yeah, I mean that that seems seems good. Um, I wasn't clear on, um, so so everybody, this looks good te to test this out? Uh, Johnny, I, have a, I have a question. Um, so we know, we know um, that this is a pilot program. We know that we have our hours. Um, we know we're not going to have any kind of an equipment uh, rule. Right. And um, uh, what's the story about, um, extra people on the court? Uh, well, the reason we re refrained from extra people on the court was specifically due to COVID. Right. right. So I think that once, if you find that the COVID restrictions are being lifted, which I think they will be, uh, the pickleball folks uh, all through, every, every area has found that they have a methodology uh, for when it's almost their reservation time. And it, if, it, if there's no reservation times, they have a methodology to put their paddles in a little right. handle. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like putting your quarter on the pool table. You got next game mm -hmm. concept. Mm -hmm. But with reservation times, you should probably find the flow to be uh, towards the end of one coming off, the other coming on. They should be just exchanging uh, okay. those time periods. I think the reservation times will make a huge difference. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have Fa uh, friends and family observing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's about safe play and uh, the responsibility of the players to make sure they can have a safe environment when they play. So I, I think that's really the issue um, that you were asking. I, I, I don't uh, think Lee, I don't think there's Lisa, a restriction. Do we allow people to um, do we allow spectators on the tennis courts? Um, right, right now. We do still have it in the COVID safety policy. But I'm, no, I just meant when, you know, I'm, what of, we're doing here is we're planning for no COVID. Outside of COVID. Outside of COVID, we do. We, we do, do allow spectators. Okay, great. Yeah, there's, okay. there's actually usually um, places for them to set benches on the courts, actually. Okay. And then, um, John, have we taken down the um, the nets at the the, the east the east uh, of the south side um, courts? That's a great question. I have no idea. <laughs> so if we haven't, I think. I'm not sure we did. 
Okay, can we just double I'm check? Because I yeah. can't imagine that that's going to go I, well. I, I would imagine if they were up, they'd be played on. But right? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm ninety nine percent sure they're down. okay. But I will make sure it's a hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, Commissioner Horowitz. Are we are we making any um, allowances for that beginner classes or uh, so time? If, if you like, I think I'd like to go through. I, I, it sounds to me where you're at at this moment is you kind of agreed that you want to see a 90 day pilot program. You, you're you're comfortable with 42 hours with the hours that are listed that Lisa just shared. Um, I wanted to go over, are you comfortable with the reservation policy be on a first come first serve basis? Uh, if you turn to page two of the uh, proposed actions, uh, the bolded pieces uh, and be at least one day prior, but not more than four days in advance for two hour maximum per day. Are you comfortable with that bullet? Mm -hmm. If so, then the open hours are only allowed uh, when no reservations have been made. So that gives the residents the stronger uh, propensity of being able to get the space. And then uh, any USA PA sanctioned pickleball equipment uh, may be used. I think you were kind of walking down that path. Okay. And then the allowance for instruction time on course, what I heard you say, Commissioner, and I think this is where you want to take the conversation is, uh, do we want to schedule uh, what's the frequency of lessons you want to schedule uh, once a month for the next three months to see if we can schedule some lesson time for a couple hours on probably, I don't know. I don't know what day is best. Is there a <laughs> demand for it? Are people asking for it? I mean, I, it's a nice I, gesture, but without demand, what's the point? Well, so have we heard in the past that there's been... Um, sort of a wave of you're not welcome because you're a beginner? Haven't we heard that at previous meetings? There, mm -hmm. there has been those comments made, uh, and but I will say, and I, I think the flavor is uh, you want a 90 day test because you're thinking only two courts are gonna be available during that time. So you might wanna consider maximizing this and not have instruction until after your 90 day period to okay. explore what again it comes down to more courts right it, it, mm -hmm. things are a lot easier for everybody when you can have more space and i and i wonder if I, I think i think it's a valid thought to have here and maintain that that periodic saturday afternoons will will be coordinated with the city maybe you want to say that you know let's see if we can put one in just to test the waters to see the interest of it over the course of the three months just to see the 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 opportunity for interest. I'm in support of that. How yeah. will how will people be informed about that? Probably notice. I think uh, Lisa can be posted on our website as well as post a sign. Uh, how can we advertise this, Lisa? If we were to post a clinic opportunity. Um, well, in the past, it's kind of been linked up with our contract class program. So it's been included in our brochure, which goes on our um, website and social media pushes and flyers as well as the mm -hmm. course. Okay. I think social media and then word of mouth. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that um, the pickleball Reach out to community. Five uh, yes. Certainly, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we would always um, include it in our Hermosa 5 -0 blast as well. But maybe at least try to target one time during the, the pilot period mm -hmm. to see, you know, how, how it rolls. Yeah. And then if, if that's, if you're comfortable with those and you're comfortable with that, then I think unless it's really up to you, but you've kind of covered all the points that staff have brought to you to, mm -hmm. to consider mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah. And we, oh, was somebody saying also that for beginners, the foam balls are the ones that you start off with? Yeah, I had made that comment about, you know, mm -hmm. might as well start them off with our, with the, I don't want to say our, the mm -hmm. preferred or more quiet ball mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they're not interested. If you're just learning the game, you want to, I mean, you, yeah, you want to use equipment that's sanctioned, but you're not interested in tournament play. You know, mm -hmm. you're not training for a tournament. You're just learning how to, the rules of the game and how to play. 
So right. it's just a suggestion, mm -hmm. but I don't know that we have the staff I, I, or ability to enforce it. I, well, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to get into monitoring. Right. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, I don't think you should get into the weeds that deep. I, okay. You've, you've addressed how to manage the mm -hmm. noise by the limited mm -hmm. hours. Okay. I, I really think if it's not a, if you're going to hold out as USAPA sanctioned equipment, you should let that low. Right. Okay. And then at some point, my my suggestion is I do believe technology will advance to the point that we might find the balls being approved, sanctioned, and quieter. Then you mm -hmm. can at that point discuss that yeah. maybe this preferred ball that you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oops, I you disappeared there here. Who disappeared? It cut out a little bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm well, sorry. Did yeah. that? Did I? You have a question then? I'm sorry if I didn't answer. I was it. just wondering, you know, the expense of these um, beginner foam balls, and um, I know I'm just looking at any little incremental way that we can without messing up what we have here. But if um, it wasn't a huge expense, if maybe the the city could purchase some of the the foam balls for beginners, and maybe give them out to beginning beginner players to to play with or you know i don't know i mean that's kind of a separate thing from this but i'm just just an idea to throw out there to get if you have a mix of beginners playing with those balls and then you have the other balls going on maybe that'll also help overall especially when the courts are you know when we get to the point of uh i guess past august and we see what happens with those other courts and, and keep in mind, the 90-day pilot uh, program wouldn't really initiate until after the council. I mean, I, 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 you're, what you're doing now, Commission, is forming your recommendation to council. Right, right. Uh, we probably won't even get to council till uh, July 13th. Mm, so okay. so <laughs> we, we could try to go faster, but I'm, I'm not sure we'll make it. Because there's mm -hmm. a lot of things, budget's mm -hmm. still happening. So, uh, so July 13th, that you know, so if, if they do approve it on, if it goes 13th and it gets approved on the 13th, you're doing 90 days from that period, and so you're going to be August, September, October into October, yeah. So you're not summer anymore. But those are no. those are our hottest months anyway. Mm -hmm. They have been on occasion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. Okay. So that works out. I mean, that, that's fine. Whatever you guys choose. I just wanted to bring to your attention. That's our job is to kind of make sure you're exactly. thought everything through. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So we have an idea of the um, timeline we're dealing with here. Okay. Well, I think it, it looks like we've gone through um, in a thorough manner, all the issues. So, um, does anyone feel uh, prepared to bring forth a, a motion on this? With everything we've discussed? I can try. Okay, I I have faith in you. <laughs> you can do it. Okay. <laughs> would you like me to share my screen, would that help? Yeah, that would be great. Thanks, Lisa. Okay. If I can see it, you know. Perfect. I'll make it, I'll zoom. zoom. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so I make a motion that we approve a 90-day pilot program with the pickleball courts hours as follows. Sundays closed, Mondays closed, Tuesdays 12 to 9 p.m., Wednesday 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Thursday 12 p.m. to 9 p.m., Friday 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturday 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., which would give us a total hour of 42 hours um, a pickleball play per week with a reservation system allowing um, two hour maximum reservations. Um, open play hours are only allowed when no reservation has been made and any US APA sanctioned pickleball equipment may be used. Um, reservations are first come first serve, can be made one day prior, but not more than four days in advance. Beautiful. You've covered it. You, yeah. <laughs> okay, do we have a second on this? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, roll call. Yeah. Chair Pizer Mays. Aye. 
Vice Chair Elman. Yes. Commissioner Lane. Yes. Commissioner Horowitz. Yes. Thank you. Very good. The measure passes on to the city council. Okay, thank you everybody. And I, I do want to also um, recognize uh, Vice Chair Elman uh, for all her work um, on this issue. Is um, She worked very hard on it and I wanted to acknowledge that. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, let us move on to um, item number D um, for uh, commission consideration. Um, and who will be doing I, this presentation? I'll, I'll do that, Cheryl. You'll do that? Okay. I will do that, yes. Okay. Um, thank you again. And uh, thank you so much for your energy and time and, and involvement with a very difficult and challenging issue. I, I think all of you need accolades for you know, not kicking the can down the road and actually taking action and, and allowing this topic to be discussed. So uh, kudos to all of you. Uh, next, this next item is about, uh, it's a recommendation, staff recommends that the commission approve potential locations for future placement of memorial benches in South Park. Uh, if you remember back months ago, we brought forward to you uh, some potential memorial bench locations at uh, Bicentennial and Noble and uh, Keito Parks and things such as that. Uh, the Public Works Department manages the uh, uh, bench memorial program, and they've now been getting some inquiries, uh, you know, uh, regarding South Park. And they we've never come back to the commission asking for a memorial bench location. So this uh, item itself is, uh, you know, basically asking the commission. Uh, for the, lo the uh, approval of these locations for future, future bench placement of memorial benches in South Park. Um, as you well know, I, you can see in the item that um, 63 uh, memorial benches have been placed since the inception, inception of the program. Show a little bit of a diagram of what the benches are. Um, and uh, the staff in uh, Public Works have identified in the attachment to uh, uh, the locations of the 14 new benches, memorial benches are kind of on the outskirts on the south side of the park. There's already benches at that park that you know of because of the playground re renovations and, and layout there. Those are not memorial benches, those are just park benches. So um, this is really entertaining your consideration to approve the locations of 14 new memorial bench locations. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see here. Um, I had a couple, let's see, what questions do I wanna ask now? Um, so how many did we just approve? Prior, at South Park? No, not at South Park, but the other ones that we just uh, kind of put into the mix. Great. Cause that was pretty substantial. They, they were, um, uh, Lisa, I don't know if I have that with me. I'm, I'm going off the top of my head. I seem to remember we were somewhere in the mid-teens uh, also, but we had four four parks we were taking into consideration. I'm going to have to do some research here. Yeah, I just, I it seemed like we, yeah, it seemed like we approved um, a, a bunch of them. You, you did, you did. And, and and those were, I'm just trying to recall, and those were added to other approved locations or were we those, completely out of stock? That was, you know? well, that was the, we had to approve those locations because we were out and they, we had five pending applications right. okay. and, and typically in the pending applications, people ask for locations. So we hadn't had any ask at South and now they're getting asked at South. Mm -hmm. So they, instead of having to just nickel dime, you keep coming back. They identified after their review and walk of the park that, 14 new benches could be uh, appropriately cited. And, and we're not saying they're gonna put 14 benches in there tomorrow. They're just identifying locations that if over time, memorial uh, applications came in, they could cite up to 14. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I'll sa save the rest for, for after public comment. Um, did anyone else have questions of staff? 
No, but I was going to say we discussed the last placement of the benches on our, at our March 2nd meeting. March meeting, helps. yeah. Did, does it give a value how many benches we there, It was up to 13 additional oh, benches, 13. Okay. but we didn't approve four of them. Okay, so nine? Yes. Okay. We didn't Thank approve you. the four potential locations that were closest to the homes in Bicentennial Park. Mm -hmm. So nine, we approved nine locations. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Uh -huh. Thank you. Seemed like it was so much, so many more. Okay. <laughs> well, there were four parks. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I guess, yeah. Okay, um, any other questions before we go to, oh yes, uh, Vice, Vice Chair Elman. Um, don't like to sound like I'm kind of, Sassy. Questions of staff, not opinions at this point. <laughs> my, my, my question is, do we have an option? Do we have to do benches? Do we not? Um, can we do memorial picnic tables? We seem to have a lot of benches. Um, is there is there oh. something else on our needed list that people don't know about that we could offer them? This Is this the only memorial we offer yes benches i thought we did so, trees well I, I public works is the one that made this inquiry of us to bring forward the item and they don't have any other dedication program other than benches and that's <laughs> how that's how i know so i think maybe in yesteryear before there was a program designed we probably took all comers yeah mm -hmm. but, but but now there's actually a program designed and approved and it's benches Okay. Lisa, so can if you we wanted some in the history, <laughs> yeah, I, so, I don't have much more information than that, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Well, on that on that work. table that you sent, there were like four memorial trees and plaques, but they all dated, I think, 2010 and prior. Yeah. I think that prior to the approval of, I think what happened, Commissioner, is that in the old days it was kind of all comers, mm -hmm. you know. And, and what happened because of that, they wanted to create some consistency. And so a, a memorial bench program was designed mm -hmm. and approved. Mm -hmm. So that's really all we have available to the community at this time. Right, right. Which is For also a memorial bench. Now, Barbara, that doesn't mean that if an individual wants to donate right. to the memorial, you know, it can be a, a table. So, if so, so the only way to get around, not get around, but... Is if, it, is if somebody said, well, you know, I really wanted to do th this, right. that would just be a regular donation. It wouldn't right. be Absolutely. necessary. Okay. It, wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it, wouldn't, like... it wouldn't contain a name and in memory of and that kind of thing. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Getting ahead of ourselves, but yeah, um, you know, hint, hint, we do have this naming policy committee and uh, yes. I just wish some of this could have, uh, you know, Held, held off till then <laughs> so we can have a more holistic approach. But um, okay, it is what it is. So um, any other questions of staff before we go to what will probably surely be a very brief um, public comment period? <laughs> um, okay, so let's open up public comment and uh, Lisa, do we have anyone um, waiting? We have um, no one on the line. Okay. Okay. Well, that being the case, um, we will close public comment and bring it back to uh, the commission. Um, so now we can really dig in and discuss this in all earnest. <laughs> In all earnest, yes. <laughs> so, so um, anyone want to uh, have some thoughts they'd like to bring up on this? I, I, I'm not sure where where we're we're supposed to go with this, other than I just it just seems like a lot of benches. But yeah, you, um, can, you can choose to reduce that number, Commission. You've done that in other. I just, I, I see how the park is used, how the parks are used. And I, I'm, I don't know, I, I sound, I feel like I'm, I, I'm being mean either way. I, it, it just seems like a lot of benches. I'll let, 
Yeah. Does anyone else have a thought about how many yeah, benches? I do because I thought there were picnic tables in some of these spaces where there are benches proposed. Uh, according to Public Works, they walked this, designed it, identified locations for, so I'm having to trust their Okay, expertise. so maybe the picnic tables are behind the- Yeah, I, th I think the, the, the picnic tables the that you're thinking of are, are uh, if you're looking at South Park, um, you, you see the very large row of trees on the, um, east side of the park, sorry, south side of the park, that's where the picnic benches are. They're on the other side of the sidewalk, right? Yes, so yes, the, In correct. the dirt, correct. On the south, south side. There are, no, there are no benches on the big grass area. There are- Right, right. Yeah, okay. But I knew there were picnic tables along there. Correct. But I think they're on the other side of- They're the on the other path. side of the walkway, correct. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. You yeah. guys. You guys, I see the word potential and up to 14. That's doesn't mean that doesn't mean we're maxing this out. We're just moving, just making a recommendation to approve potential and up to 14 benches. That's correct. That's correct. Correct. But when we do that, then in in 10 years, when you and I are not on the council, I mean on the council, on the commission, then there's nothing they they just appear. And I, it just seems like there's quite a few benches, potential benches yeah. at South Park. I, I'm looking at a, a pretty big area. I, yeah, yeah, I, I would, I would say there's, there's potentially too many potential benches. That's my okay. Opinion. Then That's let's, all I get. Let, let's recommend seven. And then 10 years from now, if they need an additional, an additional seven, then that commission can discuss it. Sure. Right. I, yeah. I mean, and maybe we'll have some more options developed sometime in the near future where <laughs> it won't just be benches. I mean, you know, I, I go to South Park a lot too, and it seems that we have adequate seating. Um, as it is, so we're doing. Well, no, no. People different. like bringing their like bringing their chairs and putting them right. in, you know, it's, pods. It, it's so not about it's not about accommodating yeah, the seating. It's about recognizing the person and the gesture and having a yeah. token Memorial. of their memory and bringing Correct. family members by yeah. there. So that's that, that's my interpretation. I agree. Yeah. Do we need fourteen more benches for people to sit on? Probably not. But we're talking about a memorial here, and we're just providing the opportunity. For 14 people to be remembered, potentially, and I'm and I'm hoping that maybe we can come up with a, a different way to honor them, yeah. besides just yeah. benches. I know. I think that I agree. Yeah. That's, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, go ahead. Okay. So pick a number. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm. Yeah, I'm 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 up for for a lower number. What I'm do you think? Lower Lauren? number. Um, how do we know how many people have requested um, South Park? They have two pending right now. Two pending, okay. Uh, and you remember when we uh, approved, uh, as Commissioner Horowitz said in March, there were five pending, so now those are done at those other parks. Right. So, you know, we don't want to get a backlog. The goal here is to have, you know, locations identified in all our parks that are, that are appropriate so that when applications come in, the people, because there's, there's a lot of time sensitive needs on these honor, honor benches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you want to recognize. So uh, you want to try to have something in the, in the, in the shoot ready to go. So right. whatever your number is. is yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, can we just, can we, can I, I, can I just suggest 10? I was going to suggest less. Okay. What uh, were you going to suggest? Well, let me look at this. You know, maybe the seven or, you know, five or That's fine. maybe even five. I'm I mean, hoping maybe we could find something different. So I'm fine I'm just, with seven. I mean, if if five could tide us over or seven could tide us over, you know, while we discuss maybe some other really nice way options in the city, um, I'd rather do that. Um, I think there's a lot we need to discuss in terms of policy for these. And I mean, I don't... No, it, I don't think we have um, other cities that do this have like a time limit on this, which I know seems kind of strange, but they like, you can have a bench for 10 years. 
and there's the maintenance issues and everything else. So, um, so I think we have a lot to kind of look at and discuss here. Yeah, I totally agreed. And um, the Surfers Walk of Fame committee is working on something like that right now is finding a new location for those plaques. So mm -hmm. this is an ongoing conversation that parallels what you're discussing, um, an alternative location for better, you know, recognizing folks, you know, whether it's a wall at the community center with an ongoing list of names, you know, it, I, I think there's several alternatives and that's something that we can discuss, mm -hmm. but for all intensive purposes for this evening, I'm completely fine with seven or 10, but I think, I think something more impressive in the way of like, you know, bringing family members to recognize somebody who's, who's no longer with us is, is something very unique that this community could provide. So I like where we're going with this thought. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could, you know, look at, you know, all sorts of things. We could look at a, some sort of a public art piece where we have, you know, um, you know, we just did some, you know, the leadership from us is doing on the bricks, but we could do something that's circling around really pretty with people's name around some sort of public. I mean, there are a lot of ways we could go with this to, to um, support uh, the community, to bring uh, some something beautiful for them, I think. And um, uh, I, I don't know, I think it's just a, a lot of benches. Okay, I have a suggestion for you. Um, so if you looked at the diagram, You've got a grouping of three, a grouping of five, and a grouping of six. Mm -hmm. I, I suggest if you're going to reduce the number of benches, you really need to reduce what location you want to reduce from. Uh, therefore, you might want to consider uh, the back, the back five, and maybe three on the on on the uh, west edge. Take away maybe. Maybe you know if you're looking at people are going to sit on these benches and maybe watch their kids playing on the turf or whatever that activity is, um, you know, so I, or, or the other side of the coin is, is I'm trying to get, it looks like those benches, those five, that grouping of five might be on the inside of the walkway. Do you guys, does that look that same way to you guys? Yes. Yeah, they are. You know, maybe, maybe we want to keep open <laughs> space open. So maybe you don't want those. Maybe you want anything, any benches to be on the outside of a walkway. That's, that's a great that's point. A, that's, that's a great a really point. Really good point. So maybe you strike out the five grouping and you strike out the three on the six grouping, and you only then consider the three and the three. That's six benches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, the ones I, on the south on the west side um that are kind of curved there too right that's on that hill i mean that's an right. odd place and that's kind of one of the more natural parts of the park that i you know i i always know i always enjoy because you see the squirrels running around yeah, there yeah. and it's just kind of a more natural part of the park so I, um it'd be nice to get rid of that kind of that top three row there i think like you were suggesting and yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think I think if if your intent is, and I and I think this is a pretty solid intent. And even when you come to discussing park master plans and things like that, and park design issues, you really don't want to put an obstacle in the way of where there could be potential play. And mm -hmm. I know that we don't schedule play at South Park. I know it's a drop in. I, I get that, but I think we ought to send a message to Public Works in the big picture of things that if that's your perspective in future parks and open space usages and benches, specifically fixed objects, you really wanna put them in a location that doesn't impact perhaps open play space. So the three on the far east end, no harm, no foul. It's kind of in a little grass turfed area there outside the walkway. The three far ones, which I believe is outside the walkway again on the far west, would also serve in that purpose in the more natural environment as you're referring to, Chairwoman. Yeah. I can't, I can't tell by the diagram if that's if those three on the backside are outside the walkway or not. I have a black. Yeah, you've got you've got three on the grass and then three in the dirt. And yeah. is the dirt on the oh, other yeah. side of the walkway? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then then that would serve the purpose of keeping because I think it sends a tone because yeah. Public Works doesn't know. I hate you know I love Public Works but they don't understand park design and usage because mm -hmm. that's not their thing. Their yeah. thing are streets and that kind of stuff, medians and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I think if you wanted to make that statement yes. and we can, you know, we could anchor that in your, in your comments that 
you're willing to support up to six memorial benches at South Park and keeping in mind for future locations, you would prefer to see bench locations in more uh, unused recreational space. Right. Just an option. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Okay, so we're looking at six benches then. If you're interested, I'm just proposing. Yeah, yeah. Do what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know, no, I, I, I like that. What does everybody else think? I like that. No? And I mean, if we have an, a need for more, you know, or need to do something else, it's easy enough to put this on the agenda and for us to get sure. something. Uh, absolutely. You know, moved. Sorry, I'm not ready to lose my computer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It, it's going to run away. Uh-oh. We need you back for <laughs> for motion. <laughs> okay. It didn't die because I plugged it in. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. All right. So we've we've agreed six at yes. different locations. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're if you're comfortable with that, I would I would say that you would approve the three to the east and three to the far west outside the walkway uh -huh. locations and futuristically if items such as this come forward again prefer bench locations to be identified outside recreational open space Oops, I lost my... mm -hmm. if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah okay okay any further discussion how do you feel about that yanni I I love where we landed. I think this okay. is great. This is what deliberation is all about. This is yeah. awesome. Good, good. Well, I think it's yeah, good, good, solid move for now. So, John, um, are we calling those benches, those three benches, on the west side of the walkway? On the uh, uh, on the yeah, outside west side of the walkway. Correct. West. west side. Yeah. I, I, I'd almost say outside of the walkway, that helps me define it a little bit better, but I, I think west, outside west could do that. Okay. And, and um, yeah, and we of course can present an updated diagram. Oh, no, I, well, what we would, yeah, what we would do is, because this action you're taking doesn't need to go any further uh, mm -hmm. So it would be communicated to the uh, public works department. We mm -hmm. would take a diagram and X out the ones you don't. Okay. And those left over the ones you're supportive of. And I think Lisa and I are pretty comfortable in understanding what your what your goal is. Okay. Very good. Good job. Well, you need to still do all the hard work. Still got to motion it, so. Yeah, we still do. <laughs> Vice Chair Elman, you care to make a motion? I don't you think I'm going to do up? as good a job as Tracy did. Oh, I'm feeling that's the true. pressure. That's true. Well, um, right. I'm I'll make, make a motion. motion. I'm going to go ahead. I'm gonna oh, no, no. Motion. Go ahead. You are started. Okay. I'm going to make a motion that we approve the potential, six potential benches three on the west side, three on the, I guess it's the east side, east side, east side on the outer portion. Right. And all benches would remain on the outer portion of the walkway to not impede recreation. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, let's call roll. Chair Pizer Mains. Aye. Vice Chair Elman. Yes. Commissioner Lang. Aye. Commissioner Horowitz. Aye. The motion passes. Thank you. Good job. Um, so we are now um, winding down to commissioner reports. Uh, item 13. We'll go to 13A subcommittees. Um, we're just getting kind of things back in motion. There probably isn't too much to report. Um, uh, I'll just read down the list. Special event committee, Lang and Elman. No. Uh, community theater. Uh, I know we're waiting for Kelly's return on that. Uh, I, I, is there anything? I don't think there's anything really to report on that, right? Just well, the only thing, well, yeah, for the community theater, um, we are opening up 
we have opened up for reservations beginning July 1st under the indoor live seated protocol by LA mm -hmm. County. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a big update right now with the community theater. And we do have, we do hope to have more information and an update on the community theater needs assessment soon. Next okay. Or so. okay. And the next steps we'll be taking. So okay. we'll definitely keep you both posted as the subcommittee members. Okay. We look forward to uh, getting an update and possibly a meeting uh, on that. Uh, multiple leases. Um, does staff have an update on that? Uh, no, we're, uh, I think we're at a place where we're uh, reviewing the report that was provided to us. I know that we're going to be getting into a discussion. Uh, Public Works is still reviewing uh, a conceptual of HBY, HBLL, Hermosa Beach Little League, because we want to get in a long-term agreement with them. So that's a long-term agreement, not a lease, but that's kind of, that. I think that falls under the use policy subcommittee. Okay. Okay, which is actually the next one is um, Committee Resources Department Use Policies. That would be the HBLL. That's what John said. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, so that's it for that. Um, Clark Building Improvements. So I can give you a, a little more of an update is uh, last we spoke with Public Works because of the retirement of uh, the public works director, they were a little, well, they are a lot underwater, uh, but Lucho uh, is now, we just got contacted today by uh, one of the staff members that I guess was an interim and now he let, went away and now he's come back. He just contacted us today saying, hey, he's gonna pick the project back up again and wants to know, uh, you know, where if we could get ourselves going again. So I said to him that certainly we're able to do so, but we need to have a meeting <laughs> yeah. to, 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 to show where we are up to date on the plans. And we want to see as a subcommittee, want to see product, you know, give me examples of, of the renovation products. So he said he would, he would go uh, start reviewing that and get back to us. So okay. he did ask when our next commission meeting was, uh, I told him July, what is it, 6th, Lisa? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but I, I'm i not sure what his intentions were because I'm not, you know, we need the committee to get together <laughs> mm -hmm. right, first. Right. So, so I, I, again, I'm waiting for him to get back to us with, with what he can get. You know, we've been being promised uh, renovation materials for like months, it seems like, and I've not mm -hmm. gotten it. So uh, I think it's, it's a works in progress. Yeah, okay, okay. And is Lucho still involved in this? Lucho is the interim uh, public works director at this point. Okay. And so, uh, yes, he's still involved. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, we got to get this moving, it, that building. Um, okay, uh, naming policy. Um, the naming policy, we've made good progress. Um, John and Lisa have been great and helped put together a draft policy, um, which would include the memorial benches. Um, I think we're scheduled to meet again. We, we, haven't, we haven't scheduled it, but we're trying to target. Right, the we're targeting, the sorry. Yeah, I haven't heard back, so. Yeah. So oh, I, I just realized I missed that email. I was on a drive and missed the email, but an email went out to everyone. No one has replied um, <laughs> to schedule a meeting um, sometime between the 14th and the 16th of June, right. which would then hopefully finalize a lot of this. And then we'd be able to bring it back to the full commission right. um, with, you know, within a few weeks of that. So we are making great progress. I'm on staff till the 17th. So I'm trying to get something clipped off. We will it. have that oh. meeting before. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, true. My apologies for missing that. Email. Oh no, it's okay. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Campbell did respond, but not with a date. Just that she'll review the material. I go. Okay. okay. I'll reply all and get that. There you go. Ooh, Thank you. Ahead. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Um, okay. So moving on to commission liaison roles. Uh, and surfer walk of fame. Uh, um, none on my end. I just can't wait for next year to start. 
recognizing people. And um, Lisa, uh, we should probably get together and figure out uh, a timeline to start receiving nominations, correct? Well, I actually, so you and I did develop the timeline oh. for this calendar year at the beginning of the year. And <laughs> well, I just pulled it out. Uh, <laughs> so basically, after we were able to um, honor our 2020 inductees in April with a video um, presentation, we took a break in May and June, July. Um, Yanni and I plan to reinstate our Surfers Walk of Fame discussions on the review and proposal of a new location for the plaques. So we'll pick that back up in July and hopefully have a, with a goal of having final direction on that before the end of the year. Um, since we couldn't hold our ceremony in 2021 and 2020, um, we will not be able to celebrate those 2020 inductees till 2022 which means that we will not begin accepting nominations again until May of 2022 for 2023 inductees. That's a lot of numbers. But basically, we um, kind of are pausing um, accepting nominations since we are you know, kind of behind two years because of COVID. Um, but we'll be doing some work beginning in July on, on our new location and picking that conversation back up. Okay. Uh, yes. Barbara. I've got a couple of questions for you guys. Um, first of all, how many people are on the backlog of being acknowledged? Um, You're talking about like from a historical perspective? No, just just because of, of COVID. You've had you've had two oh. years. Oh, we have oh. Um, four inductees that we need to honor, our 2020 inductees. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and then you've mentioned about are, are you moving the plaques? So we are in a position where we cannot add any more plaques to the pier. Okay. So we do need to determine either a new location. Um, for all of them? Or for just all the of next? Them. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, new plaques. We, we kind of have to reimagine the, the entire program, the physical portion of the program, because of the fact that we cannot add anything else to the pier. And we don't want to be in a position... Um, I think we're close to 30, There's a, lot. a little over That's 30. A lot. There's a um, lot of plaques. Yeah, yeah. So Yanni and I have done a lot of work on this. Um, we just yeah. kind of got, you know, um, in a position where our location that we were really focusing on is actually being looked at um, to honor lifeguards. So now we're kind of in a position where we need to have more discussions and um, we're going to pick that back up in July. We've had artist renditions come through. Yeah. I mean, there's been a mm -hmm. lot of walkthroughs. I mean, it, there, there's been a lot of work and it's definitely more challenging than I had anticipated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to figure it out for sure. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah, yeah. Well, didn't we um, honor the 2020, though, with the video and everything? We else? did, but not the actual weekend of events. So typically oh, okay. there's a Friday night kickoff party. We have a you know, breakfast for them before the injection ceremony that Saturday. We have Spider Surf Fest. So usually, I mean, they're getting like There's lots of four stuff. or five yeah. events to throughout the weekend to celebrate them. So um, we want to give them their proper celebration for sure. That makes Good. sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that's everything for Surf Fest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At this it's point. a lot. Yeah. You know, a lot going, going on. on there. Um, okay, Access Hermosa. Um, my again, as John said, um, we're we're just overloaded. Um, I did my begging and my pleading, but um, <laughs> but, you know, physically, staff only has so much so much bandwidth. But uh, I and I honestly don't know if the uh, extra tiles have been received yet. I I haven't gotten an update on that. Maybe that's something we could find out. But yeah. we're. We, we have a delay. It's really, really unfortunate, but um, I don't expect to see the uh, the tiles uh, in June at least, but it could be longer. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We, we can check. Okay. Okay. It would be nice if they get installed for part of the summer. It would be. Yeah, that would be nice. Okay, well, we can hope that that can happen. Um, well, thank you, everyone. So um, item 14, items requested by commissioners. Um, there are none noted. Um, I just so, have a, yes. I just wanted to say a couple yeah. things. One is I know that this is 
it's technically supposed to be John's last meeting. Oh. So oh, thank you very you. much for everything that you've done. Oh, I really well, appreciate your your outlook. And um, also, I, I, I wanted, I hope that you can relay, I know I can write an email, but um, to John Cordova about my request at the parks. There was, uh, I, I was concerned about the trash over the holiday weekend and um, he was able to get, um, confirm more trash cans, temporary trash cans, but right. still. And then um, I, I, I only went through South Park a, a few times, but the, the trash situation was so much better than it had right. been the weeks before. And also, the I, if you guys get a chance and you walk through South Park, you'll see the um, the temporary new green covering. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm not, I don't know really well, what to call it's, it. It's to be turf. It's growing turf. Yeah, it's okay. hoping that it, it works. And um, but we've put up some fences in odd places where we've we've had. There's a, a couple of long drop offs of okay. the hill goes goes to the brick wall and okay. the kids have always jumped off of that and sure. it's but they run down this little hill area and then they just fall and it I I just happened to see a mom or a babysitter literally grab a toddler by the back of his his shirt and stopped him from falling off the wall two days later. We have a chain link fence up in this area. It doesn't look beautiful, but it's so much safer. There's two mm -hmm. areas that it, it it's really, really important without having the rocks and anything to stop the kids from running down the hill that we already did that. And I'm very, very appreciative of yeah. we'll mention that, concern. John. So yeah. Really appreciate them doing that. Have you noticed the kids playing uh, clearly on the play equipment? It opened last now, week. Now there's some right? grumpy person that chases them off the. the oh, you their, need to you need to talk to that person. Well, <laughs> she's trying to stop them from pulling up the the covering. She's doing a good job of it. <laughs> um, I don't know who that is. Yeah. Okay. So, I wonder who that is. Well, it seems that we're in other matters. Did I, anybody else have other matters? I, I have another matters if you're, I can wait if you like. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead with your other matter. Oh, okay. Well, I get to read a little piece for you here. Um, the Hermosa Beach Chamber of Commerce and the Vis Visitors Bureau is looking forward to celebrating Fiesta Hermosa this coming Labor Day weekend in a way that is safe, fun, and focused on highlighting everything Hermosa has to offer. They are working on exciting details, and like most things lately, Fiesta will be different. It will have many of the things we love and treasure about Fiesta Hermosa, but also be an opportunity to try out some new ideas and support our local community. They look forward to seeing you again in September. That was a, a, a comment provided me by the chamber that I wanted to share with you that, you know, kind of a teaser, something's mm -hmm. coming. We don't know yeah. what yet, but right. it's coming. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've heard rumors that, that they're trying to rethink it, and uh, yeah. So we'll see, we'll see what happens there. So, um, other matters, anyone? Yes, Commissioner Lang. Yeah, my apologies for not making this announcement at the beginning of the meeting. I just want to um, recognize the celebration of life in Padalot for John Bulk. He was a local South Bay surfer, well-known throughout the community, amazing father and husband. Um, he lost the battle of cancer about a year ago. And um, there'll be the traditional surfer paddle out at Rosecrans this Saturday, June, uh, June 5th at 10 a.m. Okay, thank you, thank you. And let me scroll up to the beginning. Um, I had wanted to um, mention that uh, that the um, final um, Hermosa Beach mural project mural will be unveiled on Monday, June 28th at 6 p.m. So quite a, uh, 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 an accomplishment for the committee and, and for the community. So um, that should be a good one um, on the, on the um, behind the Bijou building. 
So um, yeah, I wanted to make sure that we um, brought that up as well. And um, yeah, the leadership for most, I think you mentioned it earlier, but they're targeting their uh, opening and bailing uh, also on Sunday, the 27th of June. They will be sending out invitations. They're still trying to get uh, working with us on the application process for the. Okay. I'm sorry, John, what was that? Uh, Sunday, June 27th. And who was that? It's uh, Leadership Hermosa. Oh, class. okay. Yeah, they're targeting that. They haven't sent it out yet because they want to validate it, but uh, they've been working with Public Works. They had their uh, uh, job walk and they're going to start construction, I think, next week. So it's gonna and uh, it's gonna take a massive change. It's gonna be wonderful the picnic area. So they, I just wanted to let you know you will get an invitation to some sort of uh, welcome reception, as well as the council to attend. Uh, they're targeting the 27th Sunday, the 27th, from I think 11 to 1. Okay, great. Just an FYI. And great. and lastly, if I don't get another shot, it's been my pleasure working for you all. I very much enjoyed this experience. I've come to appreciate and really love the unique fine city of Hermosa. It's vastly different from Torrance in that in size and shape, but the people and the uh, passion of the staff members here are exceptional. Lisa and Nick and, and, and uh, you know, uh, we just received Cambria came back in the office started Monday or Tuesday. So we're getting back to full staff. Kelly will be back on the 14th and I've got a little bit of an overlap with her uh, till the 17th. But, you know, it's really been my pleasure. And I just thank you all of you for doing what you do for the, the community for the community and uh, and how we service the community. And tonight was a primary example of how all of you you know, really looked at the issues. You know, I know you didn't please everybody and that's part of the point of compromise. Uh, but I think that you you listened, you, you made decisions that were hard and, you know, you'll have those decisions again in 90 days after this opens again. But I think you, you should always, you know, honor your process. It was a process, it was, it, it, it does move it forward good, bad, or ugly, it moves it forward. And the fact of the matter is then your job now is to take what's happened in that 90 day period and to reevaluate and, and, and honor, you know, what, what's moving forward for this, for the betterment of the community. So thank you for this experience. I, I enjoyed all of it. I can't believe it's already time. Time's gone by so quickly. I, I've really uh, been blessed because I have, the department has tremendous staff and we're very blessed to have them. So thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lang, did you want to no. say anything? No. no well, I, I also wanted to thank you, uh, John. Uh, you've been such uh, an asset to have um, during this time uh, in, while Kelly's been gone. And I think that we have all really benefited um, and learned from your many years of experience um, uh, yeah, um, in this area. So I want to just offer to you, you know, uh, my and our gratitude and thanks for stepping in and doing such a wonderful job, keeping things moving and, um, and, and just thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyone, any other matters? We're all good. Um, okay. <laughs> Well then, um, let us go to um, uh, one of the highlights of the evening, a German. <laughs> so um, I, um, great job everybody, um, got through it. And um, uh, this meeting is now adjourned to the next Parks, Recreation and Community Resources um, Commission meeting, um, which takes place on Tuesday, July 6th, yes. 2021. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great Thank evening. You. Thank you. Everyone. Okay. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.